Hey, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Let There Be Talk. It is November 2nd, and this episode is brought to you by my amazing sponsor, Catatonic. Catatonic.com is the website. They are your one-stop art shop. If you're a small business, comedian, or a rock and roll band, or whatever, maybe you just want to tear the town up with some of your own custom-made stickers, check them out. They do 3D prints, models, and toys. Yes, they can make a toy for you. Christmas is coming. Maybe you got someone special you want to have a toy made for. Just hit them up, man. Draw something on a napkin. They can 3D print it for you. Looks amazing. Or maybe you need some uh, videography and animation done. They do that. They also do graphics, logos, all kinds of stuff. T-shirts. You know these guys. They did all my stickers. The... um, they printed up the Dell Razor stickers, the brand new Grateful Dean stickers uh, done by my man uh, J A J Art. A J Art. Uh, check it out. Catatonic.com. Follow them on Instagram. Follow them on Twitter. Get something done, man. These guys are amazing. And, uh, and I've checked out a lot of different services, and these guys have been by far the best. Amazing, amazing company. Check them out. Catatonic. All right, let's get the episode up and going here. Uh, happy Halloween. I hope you guys all had a great Halloween weekend. What did you dress up as? Were you a, uh, a sexy something or a monster? That's what it is. It's either sexy something Slash nurse, deer, pug dog, frog, uh, <laughs> frog, sexy. Were you a sexy frog? Uh, sexy frog. Um, anyway, I, I went as Bougie Boy from Devo. You can check out the photos on my Instagram. My buddy Nico was uh, went as one of the Daft Punk guys. And it's always fun to cruise around a, a, a costume party and not let anyone know who you are. You can just kind of become someone else. Uh, I went to an incredible party. Troy Van Leeuwen invited me. And what, what a fucking great guy. Invited me to his Halloween party. And this thing was next level, man. They decorated their whole house like a haunted mansion. Had all kinds of scary shit. It was awesome, man. And there's a bunch of great people there. My good friend Steve Agee was there. Always great to see Steve Agee. I love him. I just had a good time. I almost didn't even make it. It was like 8.30. I'm laying in, uh, in bed like, ah, I'm not going out in the madness. And then a half hour later, yeah, I'm going out. And boom, got together the bougie boy, which was a hit. People liked it. Which is fun, man. They're like, oh, it's creepy. What are you? <laughs> uh, okay. Great guest today, man. I've had nothing but nothing but fire lately. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying that for on my point, uh, my side, my, uh, my, my dream guests are starting to happen, which is so cool, you know? And I've had quite a few guys from queens of the stone age which uh, if you listen to the show you know is one of my favorite bands and today is no exception i have joey castillo on joey c you know and love him he played with queens he played with danzig he plays with um a sugar tooth which we talk a lot about uh an old an old band from the 90s that i loved and you should seek it out if you can find it on eBay. Uh, it plays with Scott Whelan. Uh, Scott Whelan. Depending on how you want to call it. Everybody says it different. <laughs> Scott Whelan. Scott Whelan. Uh, who else? He's played with all kinds of people, man. But most recently, Zach Wild. With this uh, killer project I talked about recently called Zach Sabbath. It's just unbelievable, man. You gotta see it. He talks a quite a bit about it on this episode, and and other things. Uh, let's see. Kind of out of it today. It's Monday. I've been looking for an apartment, which is a fucking nightmare in L.A. I can't tell you how rotten it is. Yeah, I gotta move again. It's the yo-yo of the landlord. Up, down, up, down, up, down. 
Just insane. I'll get more into it later once I do move and uh, find a place. But I tell you what, it is. It is uh, when you don't when you don't have enough money to move somewhere um, into a good good spot. You start to get uh, you start to go crazy because the rents in this town are insane. It, it's crazy. California is so funny because. You can live for a dollar in California if you want to live in, like, Bakersfield. You can live for, like, five bucks, man, like a king. But then you can drive 30 miles, and it's, uh, like, 2,500 bucks. <laughs> it's, it's so insane. Now, in that 30 miles, you're thinking, well, maybe you just live 30 miles away and just spend no money on rent. That'd be easy. No. Because that 30 miles will take you about four hours. you got to be like Bill Burr and have a helicopter license and be able to get to L.A. 30-mile traffic all over this town. is It's getting crazy. It's getting crazy. It's almost like we need another earthquake. Run all these people out. Scare them out. I'm out of here. Earthquakes. And then we go back to cheap rents. <laughs> I think that's what the earthquakes are for. It's nature's way of just shaking up the pussies. Get out of here. This is for the hardcore. This ain't for you. This ain't for you. <laughs> you don't get to enjoy all this sun without a little scare. Anyway, how crazy. Dates coming up this weekend. Going to be in Vegas. Uh, what is it? November 6th, 7th, South Point. Two shows with Jay Moore, and I'll also be headlining the Dirty at 1230 show. All in the South Point Casino. Uh, please, if you're in Vegas, come out, man. Also, if you happen to be in Cabo, November 13th and 14th, I'll be out there performing. I'm just throwing that out. Maybe you're going to be on vacation in Cabo. I'm doing the Self Edge Grand Opening uh, Party, and that is going to be fun as hell. Arizona, I'm coming back. Laugh Factory, November 19th through the 22nd. I'll be there with Christian Spicer. And uh, what else? San Francisco, December 28th, 29th. I'm headlining. Kevin Christie's coming with me. Awesome. You know and love him. Kevin Christie, one of my favorite people ever. And then New Year's Eve, Eric Griffin and I take over the San Jose Improv. Eric Griffin, Workaholics, Montez. Those are the dates coming up. They're all pretty damn, pretty damn good, man. What else do I got for you? Just maybe one other thing. I don't know what it is. I am, st like I said, I'm kind of zombied today. Hope you guys all had a great weekend. Uh, looking forward to uh, seeing you at the shows. Today will be absolutely, this is Monday, will be the last day of the pre order of the Grateful Dean shirts. Email me at deandelray at yahoo.com. Today is the last day. Shirts will be made sometime this week and then shipped out. Dean Del Rey at yahoo.com also please uh we've made it past 400 reviews my goal is to get to 500 by the end of the year reviews on itunes leave those reviews on itunes takes one minute i like the party the show's good boom done five stars do it uh gets the show into the top 50 if you leave a lot of reviews that's how it works so leave a review on um iTunes, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I love all you guys. Keep the candles lit. Here he is, Joey C. All right, here we are. Another episode of Let to Be Talk. Fantastic guest today. I'm pretty fired up. Introduce yourself. Uh, yo, yo, Joey Castillo here. What's up, man? Joey C. Uh, Joey to be C. Here. Yes. Drum King. Ah, drummer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, though. I've had some of the best drummers on this podcast. I've heard, man. I've heard. And I was actually, like, I was just telling you on the way up, when you sent me the, uh, this little message I got on Instagram, I was like, what? Is this for real? You know? <laughs> but I was psyched, man. I was like, you know, uh, always, you know, listening when I can. Yeah. And, uh, of course, I, I'm, I'm glad to be here, man. Thanks for having it's me. It's so cool, because I, I, I tell people over and over and over, uh, bad drummer, shitty band. I don't, I don't care <laughs> what what it is. You it's know? hard, you know. It's like, and and it's true to in the sense of, it's difficult when I mean, because you know, truthfully, in all due respect, there are great drummers who have a very tough time with the band that they're with because it, right. it's it just 
it's that much the work is just that much harder if you're trying to keep something together which ultimately it's just not going to happen. You yeah, know? it's just and, not and different happen. drummers. There's great drummers out there, uh, professional guys that get put into other bands, and then you're like, God, this isn't quite right. Yeah. Like uh, yeah. I had a guy on a couple of days ago, and we were talking about um, uh, what's his name, uh, Kenny Aronoff playing with CCR or uh, not CCR, but uh, yeah. John Fogerty. Yeah, it's a different feel. Yeah, and and ninety percent of America is not going to know what we're talking about. But if you played music, players, players, know. You, you know, and you go, it's well, like Chris Slade in ACDC, you know? Thank you. Cause I'm a huge Phil Rudd fan. Yo, huge. And, huge. Was, and it's a funny, it's, it's really, um, like ultimately he's, he, he is one of the very first drummers that as a kid, not even, you know, cause I started playing just kind of on a whim because a friend had a drum set and that's how I kind of learned. And, but I just always loved the music and I was a huge, obviously Bond fan. When I really discovered ACDC and stuff, it was like, in my brain, it clicked like, this drummer is one of the greatest drummers ever. I just it's insane. Think, you know, and, but so, I remember kids I grew up with were always like, the guy sucks. You know, and I was yeah. always like, how is that? You know, and I, it was funny. I got, I, I've told the story before. Um, I got in a huge argument with this kid who was like supposed to be one of the best drummers at our school because he kept telling me how Pert was the guy and oh, Rudd sucked. There's you know? always like, those dudes. But you know, and I was always yeah. kind of like, but no, dude, it's like, that's not happening. That's not the way it is. Well, you, you know, know how you know is when you're playing early on in rock and everyone can play, let's say you're in high school, and then the guy goes to play ACDC Highway to Hell, and you're like, this doesn't sound like <laughs> yeah. Highway to Hell, but you're young in a band, you don't understand right. different drummers, and you're, and that's when I started to understand, holy shit, what Phil Rudd does, no one can do. No one can do, man. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's he's just got that pocket, he's got that, and it's weird, because he's got a, he really has a big sound, you know, and... He's not do. I see. I don't even want to say he's not doing a lot because right. he's doing a lot. Yeah. He's, he's complimenting the music. He's complimenting the songs. He's making it so that every one of those dudes in that band, including Cliff Williams as a bass player, who's just kind of power downstroke. It's like everybody's like uh, a piece of that puzzle that make it work. You know? Absolutely. But, but and and Rudd's the dude holding it down, man. And when like, you see him in the movie Let There Be Rock oh, and dude. his snare breaks dude. and they're changing the snare and he's not fucking missing a beat, he's you're like, best, this dude. is incredible. He's got the cigarette dangling. Fucking cool. Just cool. He looked cool. His hair. God, he played. looked so cool yeah, until dude. recently, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He went down. Uh, I love the guy. But uh, man, when you see I him now, you go, what the fuck? Because on the so last tour, he looked great. All that. Yeah, I went to see him. Yeah. Actually, me and Brian. Runaway uh, Train or uh, yeah. that, that tour. The first one that they came with that last record yeah yeah uh the train uh, uh whatever the train is yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah black ice the record yes. yeah i went we went to see him at the i'm forum. a huge fan of him i'm the same that, way that dude. forum show was incredible oh, the train oh, came oh, out it was smashed good, badass dude yeah. like i said me and me and brian uh boc uh had went and we both were just like you know didn't know what to expect you know yeah. and this, that and and just our fuck. My Latin saying. Oh, you can say like, anything you want. Our minds were blown, and it was like our ears were blown. And we were in the middle of an Eagles tour, Eagles Death Metal tour. Yeah. And it was like we just can't. And the next day, we both were just like, dude, how fucking badass was that? It was just, it was so fucking rock, and just like, and it was crazy because it was before they redid the form. I, I mean, the, yeah, you know, yeah, it was the old form, was, ghetto but form. It, but the people were even better, dude. Yeah. Everybody that was there was like every walk of life, and it was all these like dudes that you could tell came straight from work in their suits. Yeah. And then there were the. Hesher chicks that were probably banged the band back then. Yeah, you know, yeah. But everybody was having such a great time. I was like, dude, that dude, shit is amazing. It is. It's it's just great to see it, you know, and hear it. So now, uh, the first time I I actually realized that I saw you, I, I was reading up on you. And first of all, you played in Sugar Tooth. Yeah. Now that's the band that had sold my fortune. Yeah, dude. I'll tell you what. Yeah. That fucking record crushed. I Thank didn't you, even man. know Thank you were you. in that yeah, band. Yeah, I did both records. We done well. That was the first one, right? And thank you. I, oh, I, that I, song. I, I, I always tell people, and I just looked on iTunes to see. Yeah. I got the CD over there. Oh, cool, uh, man. Cool. And I looked on iTunes. It's not on there. I don't even think I have a copy of it. It was funny because I had Dave Jordan on a couple weeks ago, and I oh, was cool. like, there was all these '90s bands that I was really into that didn't make it, but like Dig. 
uh, a sugar tooth. There was like LSD. Oh yeah, yeah, great, yeah. Uh, yeah. great bit. You know, I just did this documentary. God, I can't remember the name of it now, but it's based on strictly on that or solely on that on the nineties. All those bands, yeah. Wow, you know, and it's, there's a bunch of people in it. I think there was a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really cool. I, I haven't seen the final cut, but it's a guy, it's a guy from Australia that did it. I got, I'll let you know when I. What was I the remember. background of that band? They were an LA band. LA band. Because um, to me, if you listen to them, they kind of. Uh, you know, they they sound a little uh, Love Bone. There was a few bands out there that were doing a Love Bone thing, you know? Sure, sure. And, um, uh, but it had that song, man. Yeah. That song was epic. You know, man, it was like, it, it was a funny time, too, because myself, I mean, I, I kind of, my career, I guess, really began with punk rock and right. so, playing. I was I'm jumping around dude. just because I was yeah. so blown away by no Sugar Tooth. But, but I mean, that's how it kind of led up because when, you know, the whole punk rock thing and the, the, the kind of died out and it was like L.A. really... You grew up born yeah, in Gardena. Born yeah, yeah, grew yeah, up yeah. in L.A. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So you saw L. You saw punk oh, from I mean, like Circle Jerks, Black Flag, all, all that great stuff. The great yeah, yeah. shit. That's X. I, exactly. That, X was the very first punk rock band I saw in '80 at the Whiskey with the Gears and the Blasters. The very first show I ever saw, and I think I, I forgot what I'm, I was in like seventh or eighth grade. And God, what a great I, show, right? Billy was, Zoom. It was unreal. He still blows my mind. It was unreal, and, and that's what literally. Like I've said to many people, it's like that's what really kind of formed me. I think as as, as a music lover and as a player, because yeah. I, my mind was blown. I saw X and I saw DJ and it was X senior and it was just like Billy and and I just sat there going because I again it was something that I really gravitated towards as a kid in my bedroom listening to the radio like riding on the rocks yeah, weekend yeah. shows you know and, of I was course. Like, and buying vinyl I was a vinyl geek and I still am yeah me like, too my house is full it's like right we, it's like it happens to you you get that that bite and it's just like forget I it fucking never goes love away. it me too dude it's like it's the best you know <laughs> but it's like that's what I did and I started collecting records and then I finally had a friend of mine this chick who was older than me who literally she was like what? I forgot she worked for an LA radio station too. It was funny how I got to meet her, but she called me up. And she's like, "Hey, I know you love punk rock and all that kind of stuff. You want to go with me to a show tonight?" And I was yeah. like, "Yeah, okay, cool." So I snuck out the house and went up to Hollywood with her, and that was a gig I went to. Wow, and it was like the the way changing. the way they do Soul Kitchen, you know, uh, dude, I, like, those two voices together, man. Such a Amazing John Doe, contrast, and it, it's just you know? like, you know, it, it, to me, it wasn't even punk rock, you know, because really I was San Fran and you had the Mabue and that yeah, was like the, the fucking man, yeah. giant Mohawks and the, that kind of GBH yeah. look. And well, I mean, Dead everybody Kennedy's. had that whole, like, you know, LA versus San Francisco. Yeah. Versus, it's like everybody had their DC. own kind of style. You know yeah. what I mean? Obviously. Um, so, but yeah, I know what you're talking about, you know, but, but X really was. Which most people, I think, you know, and, and I don't want to just say they're a punk rock band because they are. They're far yeah. much more. And Absolutely, that's no diss to punk. Or they're like else. the Clash to me, as far as like right. the Clash are reggae. They're punk. Sure. They're ska. They're they're you know yeah. whatever. They're yeah. you know. And then I think you know with with X, it was really like this roots Americana thing that they kind really of really was like really. You kind of like well, I mean, for a lot of people, it's where you kind of discovered that. You know what I mean? Like the, yep. the whole thing, and it's like you know, X was a big part of that. You know, the Blasters were a big part of that. All Blasters, that kind of and I remember they played so much, you know, around all the time. So it was kind of like, you know, people I know of my age when you know punk rock, it kind of reverts you into discovering all those bands that they were influenced. Those bands were influenced by, and that's how the Stooges came about to me. That's yeah. how the Dolls came about. That's how yeah, you, you know, find it backwards. Exactly. Like I hated the Grateful Dead. Right. You know, growing up because I grew up in the Bay Area and everybody's deadhead. I'm like, yeah. fuck all that. But all the bands I loved, I, I found out later. Oh, they're just doing the Dead. Yeah. You know, Black Crows. Yeah. Uh, you know, all the stuff backwards. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, even uh, Almond Brothers, I love because oh, of the I, jamming. You know, love the Almond Brothers. Yeah, right. Almond it's Brothers. incredible. It's so yeah. I was just. It's funny. Both the Almond Brothers and the Black Crows. I was just listening to uh, not too long ago with a friend of mine. We were on a road trip, and he was like, he started putting, he put, started putting it on. I was like, man, I haven't heard this shit in so long, you know. And it's like, it's funny. Even for the Black Crows, for instance, it's like we got into this whole topic about them because I remember when they first came out. Yeah, just this hard to handle cover. Yeah, they were yeah. like the faces. Yeah, and it was very, you know, it was very studio-esque because yeah. Ruben, you know, yep. the first record. But the, it was and them and they went, it was like, holy shit, man. Yeah. Like, what a great, Remember great Remember London live, Choir man. Boys? You had, I, I, yeah, vaguely yeah, they remember They were them, another yeah. band, you know, that was kind of doing the same thing, a yeah. Stones Faces. 
but then the second record comes out and you're like wow this is good yeah. but then the third record comes out and they're straight almond brothers yeah. and you're like this well, that's the thing i think with you know with with uh, the black crows especially i mean obviously you know being a player and all you know when you're in a band and you when you spend time on the road oh, so yeah. you spend time on the road man that's when the bands really start to find themselves you totally. know it's like and things start happening and, and and truthfully that's that's the way it was for sugar tooth you know we kind of going back um kind of it was a group of guys that had called me because a friend of a friend had told them that i was a player and i kind of stopped playing a little bit you know because i wasn't really into hair bands in la I right was like, it wasn't my scene and I just was kind of like, wow, I don't, what am I going to do from this point on? You know, and I was yeah. just kind of hanging out, whatever. But guy, Jane's Addiction is, you, no, you know, yeah, you yeah. got that scene. That's what I was saying. That was all kind of really starting to happen. Right. You know? And um, yeah, I remember seeing Jane's. I mean, and I mean, even the Peppers at that point, it was like they were really kind totally. of like taking that this mother's next, milk. Yes. And, you know, and well, even before. Oh, yeah. The know? first record. Yeah, you know, and so that's why I say it's like there was all these kind of things happening, and I was, you know, and I was, you know, always a music lover and checking it all out and stuff. So it was always like, okay, well, then these guys, Sugar Tooth, came along, and uh, Are, were they LA guys? Or? They were. What it was was, uh, let's see, at the time, the guitar player is he's uh, his name was Tammy. We from New Orleans, uh, okay, and they had a different singer back then. They weren't called Sugar Tooth. It was a different singer. Um, and he's the rest of them. One was from Seattle. The singer was from Seattle. The guy kind of yeah. whose kind of brainchild well, was, was. Well, that was the later singer. Oh, the later. And when you heard who did the records was the second singer. Oh, okay. The guy who actually started it was a different band then. Um, so, but it was the bass player, the guitar player, the singer, and they had a different drummer. Then they called me. I started at the tail end of that original singer, that lineup. Yep. And then went their ways, found the new singer, which was Mark Hutner, um, who later started playing with. Uh, James Hall, Pleasure, New Orleans, killer fucking band. Can't really, yeah, James Hall, James oh, Hall. Oh, okay. Um, but he he was in another local band. He was a Valley kid, and um, the singer was. Yeah, so that's wow. how it all began. So that started with the four of us, and and then did you guys get a record deal from like out clubbing yeah, and stuff? Yeah, what, and what was it, it the one song sold my fortune yeah. that did it? I well, know, pretty much. It Back was like, then, you it, could have one good song. Yeah, and the label. Of course they would like sign you, but then they would make you demo forever, yeah, demo yeah, deals, yeah. you know? And that's what happened was we kind of, we got signed to Geffen, you know, so it was all under the whole Nirvana umbrella of what everybody was dreaming about doing with the next band, all this kind of stuff. So that was kind of good and kind of bad. Um, but we played around, we toured our ass off. We never, it was, and that was it too. It was a great live band, you know? Yeah. And that was how I met Josh was back. We, we played with Caius a couple times. Wow. You know? and, um, so yeah, we I mean we did a lot of great tours. We opened up for Soundgarden, I think, at the Palladium with yeah. uh, them and uh, dope like Bad Motor yeah. Finger or the uh, Louder Than Love record. I, it might have been louder. Oh, it's probably uh, Bad Motor Finger ninety two. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What a great. Wait a minute, I'm trying to think who was playing bass. I thought I don't think Ben, ben? was playing bass yet. Oh really? Loud. It might have been loud. Loud. That's that's my favorite Soundgarden record. It's. It's just so raw, isn't it? Well, it's it's like a new Black Sabbath. Yeah. I mean, when you hear that record, because you hear the one before it. Ultra um, Mega. Yeah, Ultra Mega, which is totally great. Great. Uh, and even the EP with Flop and all that. But that's a different band. Absolutely. And, and then somehow they signed A&M, and they do uh, Louder Than Love, and it's it's like tuned to C. And it's sludge and dirgy, and it's like That's gun. Why I like it too. Me too. That song, it, Gun, yeah. and hands all over. That is great stuff. That man. shit is fucking yeah. epic, man. I saw him like ten times on that uh, tour because uh, their agent was my agent, uh, oh, cool. Tom LaPena, which was at Triad back in the I day. Triad, triad yeah. which became uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 which yeah. became like uh, something later. I forget what they were, but anyway. You join that band, you get a record deal, and and you're fucking up and running, and this is your first taste of like record yeah, deal. Yeah, this was like it was a real deal to where I actually was able to quit a job, and you know, for the most, but you know, right. for a little while, anyways. You what know, kind like, of work were you doing? I was at that point. I think let's see. When, when I, I think I was just driving a van at it for a delivery service, just rock and roll shit. Yeah, you know, it was like something I could get done at this time and bail, hit the studio and play and whatever. Yeah. So. And kind of a loose, you know, a little bit of a loose schedule. I was still partying and shit back then, too. Like, yeah, absolutely. Band guys, <laughs> yeah. the things they can do are construction, 
uh, delivery. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like in San Fran, it was bike messenger. Oh, okay. you yeah. know, and my buddies in New York too, same deal. Yeah. They were all bike messengers, same <laughs> yeah, thing. Totally, you know? Yeah. And now they're all weed bike de- deliveries. Yeah, that, that's you know? the shit, right? Yeah. Making yeah. fucking money. Yeah. Weed is uh, where, where you should put all your money. You it's, know, it's like you know, just the other day I was watching CNN and the same thing. It's like the, the governor of uh, Colorado was just talking. Yeah. And it's so funny because he's, you know, you know, middle aged gentleman yeah. talking about that, but he's he's just he's selling it, man. Oh, he he's hated sell yeah, if you watch him on sixty minutes, he hated weed. Exactly. And That's then, the whole story yeah, was based you, on you watch him on sixty minutes. Yeah, opinion and then, about it. then he change it and all of a sudden he's like, Well, this is great for my city. That's yeah, it. Yeah, well, whatever that, you know, it is. It's yeah. like it's like with most I think uh White collar guys now. It's like yeah, they yeah. see the money. Well, they grew, and also they grew up in the fifties where reefer madness and all that, like yeah, weeds, the yeah. devil, and you're gonna you're gonna smoke heroin if you do weed yeah, and all yeah, that. You know, and and then they are afraid to admit sure. to like that's all. Well, bullshit. I think that's the whole thing too. Like you say, that everybody's afraid to say anything, especially with politics now. It's like yeah. it's gonna come back and bite me in the ass. But it's like it's funny though. The whole weed thing is like you know not not to keep jumping from thing to thing, but it was it's that thing. You know? Yeah, yeah, like, absolutely. Now it's a big investment. You know, a smart one. There was a big thing going on in the late 80s, uh, 90s. Heroin was going everywhere. Did uh, you guys get involved with that? Because uh, it's amazing. It seemed to skip. A lot skip. of my friends. It'd be like every other band member. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That band, seriously, I think, you know, we just, we're just, you know, I mean, really, drinkers, yeah, you know, yeah. a lot of weed. A lot of you know, I mean, we you know, acid, that kind of stuff. You yeah, know, typical. It was fun, man. You know, really, it was fun. Yeah, heroin like, to me was never partying, and I, I just did. I had a lot of my old when I was a kid, and like I say, in punk rock, a lot of my older buddies kind of got into heroin and stuff like that. And I, I was always like, eh, you know, it's not my thing. Yeah, um, I like to go up. Me too. I was yeah. the same way, man. You know, I was finding you know, cross yeah. stops and coke, Christmas speed, and coke, and this black beauties. Show. Yeah, yeah, all, <laughs> all that shit, dude. But. uh yeah, it was like it was kind of. Thankfully, with that band in particular, man, it was like that wasn't ever the thing, you know. Right. It was like. Uh, so you guys did a second record. Okay, so this is what happened. I, I I did the first record, and we like I say, we we toured and toured and toured and toured and toured, and then, uh, you know, we did all kinds of shit, man. We played, we did all kind of opened up for Slayer at fucking Iguanas and oh, Mexico. Oh, Iguana! You know? Remember that place? Yeah. It was great. Yeah. So I Iguanas, think, he opened for Slayer down dude, there. Dude, it was nuts. That's so a. We, Brutal opener. Brutal opener. And we got through it, dude, and it was great. So, yeah. you know, we, I mean, we did that. We opened up for the brains down there, bad brains. Wow. We always on these crazy, weird bills, you know. And yeah, that's weird because I don't picture you as like uh, a heavy band at all. To me, they were really melodic, and it was kind of yeah. like a, a, it was a little bit of Jane's yeah, with a little very, bit of Alice exactly. uh, or Love Bone, I mean, yeah. with some just 90s rock. It was, it, you know, it could get very, uh, at times, you know, we used to, I mean, especially live, it, it would get a little bit, you know, a little drony at times, which yeah. was cool. You know, we get, you know, we used to really got on that whole thing to you know, playing something very repetitive for yeah. and bumming people out or psyching people out, you know. But yep. but at the same time, you're right, though. He, my, uh, the singer had a great voice. Oh, like, God. It was a pretty voice, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, kind of blind was, melon. He, yeah, you know? very, very, yeah, exactly. Very melodic and, you know, um, very smart singer, you know what I mean? So... Music was heavy at times, you know, and that kind of thing. So, but it, but we never really tried to like stick to that a formula sound thing. Right, yeah, right. you know, it was always kind of you, you weren't know, shoegaze or yeah. a grunge. We, you know, we, we and we tried it all, so to yeah. speak. You know, and it, and it worked for us for the most. Um, exactly. That's what was great about the '90s. There was really seemed like no rules. You had Jane's Guns and Roses, then you had Blind Melon, I mean, you had, and you then know, you had. You know, then you would have uh, Nirvana and Alice yeah. in Chains, you know, it was all different flavors. All different, man. And that's what I think, you know, really it was kind of like those, that particular, like you say, that time with those bands, I think we're finding it finally. Yeah. If they weren't into, they they kind of were starting to apply the DIY, the no rules kind of thing to, to rock. Because, yeah. you know, that came from punk rock, came from that hardcore. A lot of that is Lollapalooza, too. That, too. Turning you on to, like, hip-hop and metal. Sure. And you got Ministry, but then you got Ice Cube. Yeah. And then you got... And you that know. was the other thing. I got I got really into hip-hop. Like, I mean, I saw yeah. N.W.A. I saw, uh, yeah. you know, it's like... I saw N.W.A. Yeah, the Celebrity Theater. Wow. Kind of, so That's great. I was, saw Public Enemy awesome. on the... Uh, uh, Fear of the Black Planet tour. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. it was unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, and 
Digital Underground opened. Oh, okay. And I, I remember, a bunch of times I remember, too. I was like one of the only white guys there. People yeah. kept coming up to me, going, "Yo, man, where's the bathroom?" They thought I worked there. <laughs> it was hilarious. That's awesome. That's man. a true story. But I, I can never forget the power of Chuck D and those SW1 guys so with, killer, with right? the yeah. rifles, yeah. and they were spinning them, you know, and it was just like burn yeah, Hollywood, burn so that man. voice and yeah. and all that shit, like fight the power, you oh, know. Man. It was like fuck. Just bad. It was like you know, it was. For for people that grew up in our age at that time too, we're the so same we, age exactly. You know, and so. That's what it was like. It was, um, you know, it was it was heavy. You know what I mean? Oh, it was God. the message. I called it the new metal. Yeah, you, what, know, you know, because you had all this metal in the eighties, uh, Metallica, and you had uh, you know Slayer and Anthrax and and speed metal and all that. But then when NWA comes out and it's like fuck the police yeah. and shit, you're like, well, this is the new metal. Exactly. You this is like I mean? the hard. This shit. is dangerous you know, like, oh, shit, yeah. man. And and there was some serious anger coming yeah. off those speakers. Yeah. You it know? was fun, man. It yeah. was it was a good time. Time and it was like you know again I, I was lucky enough to see a lot of that man you know how like, long did NWA play when you saw him? Um, I that's th the thing back then those hip hop shows were it, short. Yeah, and it was uh, I think like EPMD opened. I can't. Remember, I was trying to remember the bill. I think it was like EPMD and the DOC was on it and this and that. But they basically just did the, the first record. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, for the most, right, right. You know, that's all. That's all it really was about. Remember the early hip hop shows. They were terrible because you're waiting for the samplers to load up. Oh, dude, it took a long, yeah, it yeah, took yeah. a long time. So they would go like, you know, fight the power. Then it would end, <laughs> yeah. and then he'd be up there like, "Yo, man, we gotta take back what yeah, we gotta yeah. get," and all this. He's giving these speeches, and after like yeah, five I saw minutes, it with Griff too, man. It's yeah, like yeah, was remember that? Off, he dude. was going crazy. <laughs> yeah. He was saying crazy was shit. It was yeah. Professor it, Griff was out oh, of his it, mind, it, man. It, it was no hilarious. one even talks about that guy anymore. And dude, you know, he was. It was. It was a funny time because, yeah. like, you know, he really did piss a lot of people off. And well, Farrakhan me, was big. Oh, well, yeah. Farrakhan, Farrakhan was, was out big. there. And I loved watching Farrakhan interviews. Like, uh, if you ever see Farrakhan on 60 Minutes, it's one of the best interviews ever. It's gangster from back then. He's straight up just saying, that one. like, it, it's crazy. And yeah. you can watch it on YouTube. But yeah. so, obviously, Professor Griff, uh, I mean, Chuck D is it's delivering the message. But Griff, is he's Farrakhan. He's, yeah, you know, yeah. he's grabbing that. And he's going the extra level. He's, he's, he's letting people know, like, the <laughs> oh. anger side of it. You get oh, yeah. the message from, yeah. from Chuck, but then, you know, yeah. you're just letting you know how it really is. Yeah, you yeah. Know? But, but meanwhile, you're waiting for these samplers yeah. to load up, but people don't know all the stuff was loaded right. in these ancient samplers. And then they would go, all right, we're ready. Yeah, next one. <laughs> yeah, 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 next yeah. one. That shit yeah, is yeah. wild. That's funny, yeah. Um, okay, so you go, you're, I uh, oh, cut so, you off, yeah, you're so doing a second that, record. And then, so what happened was, was after, the, while we toured that first record, it's a crazy story. I uh, came home because we had to, at that point, we were out for a very long time. We're just like I say, pounding and pounding and really building this base. Then all of a sudden there was like all these, you know, going to come home. You guys should start the new record. No Changes more too. You're at, uh, you're at Geffen? Still at Geffen. And then it turns into DGC? Yeah, exactly. So that's a mess. So we're like, okay, you know, again, like you said, people are changing. So people that signed us aren't there, but yet we still have a main guy, Todd Sullivan, who was great. Um, who still believes in the band and just come home and start the new record and stuff. So I come home, we come home for a little bit, and uh, a person who worked for the guy, for somebody who was trying to manage uh, Sugar Tooth at that time, yeah, uh, calls and says, "Hey, uh, I, I." It was weird. It was the time of the of the, the voice machine answering machine still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I came home say. one day from the check my machine, and there's somebody said, "Hey, you have a uh, you have a call time this weekend." Uh, for a Danzig audition, and I was like, "What? Danzig audition? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are you like, talking about? I'm in a band." Yeah, and yeah. that's exactly what I said. Yeah, I right. was like, "I'm just the wrong number," and it was weird because I had saw a friend of mine the night before, first day back in LA. I went to see, I forgot what band he was in. Shit, but I went to see him play, and he told me he was going out for. It. Yeah, he's like, "Oh, auditioning for Danzig this week." And I was like, "Oh, cool, dude," because he was a huge Danzig. And I was like, "Yeah." Oh, Go home, like I said, I get this message the next day, and I was kind of like, "Oh, that's weird." I was like, "I don't even who's I don't even know who that is." Yeah, you, know? you didn't even ask to do it. <laughs> Turns out it was a chick I was dating. Made a call, gave this person my number, blah blah blah. So I called back and I said, "Hey, uh, you know, this is Joey. I think I got this message, but I'm I'm in a band and I'm not looking to bail." Yeah. And then they're like, "Okay, well, hold on. I'm going to put you on the phone with so and so. This is the person who was." Gonna possibly manage my band, Sugar Tooth. Yeah, who managed Danzig. Yeah, yeah. 
My guy goes, hey, Joey, what's up? This is so-and-so. Oh, hey, what's up, man? He's like, oh, okay, here's the deal, dude. Your band's about to get dropped. So oh. what I'm going to tell you is... Oh, yeah. Is, Take this audition. I want you to come check this out. Wow. Oh, he man. just tells you like, dude, like and, it's nothing. Oh, dude. Like it's nothing. Like it's hey, your nothing. shit's over. Yeah. It was nothing. It's yeah. business. You know, yep. I'm like, okay. And that was my first taste of it. Like, oh, yeah. wow, this sucks, you know. So here I am sitting here. I don't know whether to call my boys in the band and go, look, we're getting dropped. I'm an audition for Danzig. Yeah. So I just said, you know what? I called my band lawyer. Yeah. And I said, you know, what do you think about this? He's like, it's true. You guys are not, it's not quite sure if you guys are going to do the second record. I think you should go for this because I think in the meantime, you can do this and keep working. And then if you want to, you know, blah, blah. Oh, I'm like, okay. He's like, but don't say anything yet because you don't even have the gig. Yeah. Okay. Typical situation, right? Oh, it's like a shit. Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, okay, we're FedExing you all the in, the new record, the new Danza record, we're FedExing you. Which and record is it? It the was third four. one? It was oh, four. So four. I, was, I was coming in after Biscuits, who's my, okay. my favorite drummer. Yeah, I want to get time. into that but once we get so, into this because... You know, and obviously I'm very familiar with Glenn because of early days. And, yeah. you know, I'd met him back, way back then, the, the Sam Hain or the End of Miss, whatever, as a kid, you know. But, but I wasn't like... You know, because I had my band and I was doing my thing, I didn't follow Dan's again anymore yeah. so much. I still right. love all of it. Yeah, you know? I was the first two records. Yeah. And then the third one. But the third one, I was still on a little bit. But yeah, then, yeah, you know. Yeah. You know, and that's just thing. It's like, you know, it, it wasn't that they weren't as great. It was just, it was different. You know, you're doing your thing. Yeah, and know? the first two were so epic. You're like, I've yeah. got my Danzig. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. I mean, one and Lucifuge are uh, Lucifuge could be one of the best records ever made, man. Lucifuge is, you know, see, I personally love the first record. Right. But the thing is, is like, I know so much about it from yeah. Glenn yeah. that I know, like, the songs that he wrote, you know, back in, you know, in the Misfits days in Sam Hain that yeah. made it to that record. And so I know I got all this crazy, stupid, geeky shit that I'm like, oh, yeah, that's my record, you know? Yeah, hell yeah. But, anyways. So I just, you know, I was like, okay, well, they're gonna, we're going to send you a package of the new record and the, and the songs to learn. I'm like, okay. And this is before the internet and blah, 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 yeah. downloading shit. So they had to wait for a hard CD to come. Yeah. So, <laughs> and in, that, in the meantime, you know, I'm going like, uh, I got to call my buddies. Like, and I can't call my buddy who I know who's trying out the next yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I don't want to even do that. So, hey, you got the dancer record. I need this and this. Yeah. Okay, so here's the deal. So that was supposed to be happening Friday yep. to get the stuff. And then this is even funnier. Saturday, I had to go to this big family reunion. Yeah. It was hilarious, right? So. I, I it was like I was home and my parents you got to be there it's a big family reunion I'm like okay I'll be there so all day Friday I'm waiting you know five o'clock comes around still no UPS no this no no delivery no this managers guys call me they're like did you get anything yet nope never came yeah they're like okay we're sending somebody over now all right oh I'm waiting and waiting guy never shows up oh my god like, really? bike okay, messenger well, I'm like okay well fuck <laughs> <laughs> totally <laughs> so I'm like whatever if it's gonna happen it's gonna happen if not I'm oh well it's like. Saturday, go to my family reunion. I'm sitting there, just bas just trying to learn. Of course, mother, and, yeah, yeah. You know, a couple of listening to him, like, okay, getting all these changes down, whatever. While you're at the family yeah, reunion, yeah. hilarious. It's funny too because I heard about it later on. For you, you know, this kid brought it up to me, who's I guess a cousin or a family. I remember you were sitting there, but um, with headphones on. So Saturday passes, man, and you know it's a Saturday. Ain't no Saturday delivery. You know, yep, I get home yeah. with nothing. I'm like, all right, well, fuck it. You know, so. Saturday night they call me and they're like, "Listen, we're putting you on, or put, we're, we're going to set your time to be the latest, so you have some time to prepare and blah 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 blah." Mind you, there's already dudes coming back for callbacks. Yeah, right? yeah, I'm like, yeah. Is this really even fucking fair, dude? Really? It's <laughs> yeah. Like, but I'm you don't like, even have the record. I'm like, you know, now you're like, going to cram it for like dude, a thirty no, minutes. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, I'm just like, okay, you know. And where's the audition at? Sir? No, it's at Mates. Oh, mates, it's of course. Mates Great Hollywood. place. Great it's place. my favorite place. And it's yeah. like, I still, I was just there with Zach. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. But anyway, so, uh, I get me and my girl at the time, she's like, you know, she's really pushing, like, you gotta do this. Just do it. Don't fucking back out now. Just, just try it, you know? Yeah. I'm like, all right, whatever. So, of course, we get there. It's late. I think my audition was for, I think it was for like 11 p.m. or something like that. Wow. It was late, you know? Yeah. So, I swear to God, man, I'm sitting there, the parking lot, on the other side of a wall because they were on the other side. Yeah. I'm like, listen to everybody. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Playing yeah. this or playing that. Okay, just trying to take as many notes as I can, yeah. you know. And uh, and how many songs do they want you to do? Three? 
Uh, fuck like, no, dude. It's like I they, wish it was that. You they know, want you to play the whole thing. No, like, they, they they gave me like a list of like five or six songs. Right. You know, and what was on there? Like uh, Mother was on there. Yep. Um, there Twist of Cane. Twist of Cane, obviously. She rides. She rides. Yeah. Okay, those are the old ones. Okay. And then there was two or three new ones. Right. All right. That which I told him. I said I never got that record. I don't know. I you know I'm I'm winging it. So yeah. this this is what I I think I can walk through. Um, but as far as the new ones go, man. I, yeah. The, now, who's in the band? Erie Vaughn and yeah, John Christ? Erie and John Christ. Wow. Erie and John Christ. John are. Christ. Now, uh, <laughs> what the fuck, man? He has the greatest band. You know what I mean? Yeah. Erie, John Christ, Chuck Biscuits. And awesome. you're, I mean, and those guys have fallen off the fucking earth. Yeah. That's weird, man. You know, it's like, I, 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 I don't know, and I've always thought the same thing, you know? Like, like, where is John Christ? You know what I mean? I saw John actually... He never played with anyone again. Uh, like, how did in a band just grab him, someone, you know what I mean? Now, Chuck, or Erie Vaughn, I can see why he didn't play. He was kind of like a, you know... Erie like was a, awesome. He was just like a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Erie was just like, you know... He, he's old school rock, he just like, we own. got booze and weed, let's go. Yeah. And, and, and honestly, dude, he was he was a full-on straight-edge punk rocker, you know? Uh, oh, oh you're straight-edge? Oh, he was back then. Oh, yeah, back then, yeah, because yeah. when I saw him, he was a, yeah, he was no, a partier. He was, yeah. And, you know, that's the thing. It was, for me, coming yeah. into that, literally being my first big, like... On a bus, you know, tour yeah. managers, techs, and all this kind of shit. Did it was awesome. And a, but wait, hold on. Though. So you audition? Okay, so yeah, so I go yeah. down, and you don't know the songs. You play them, and that's just it. I just go in, and I and literally, and it was, I could see the minute I walked in, uh -huh. like the frustration on Erie and John's fr yeah. face. Just was Glenn they were there? Burned. Yeah, Glenn was there. Okay, and he was he was fucking great. He knew I came from like punk rock. He knew I'm the wasted youth days and blah blah blah. So he was he was. He was awesome. Me and him hit it off immediately, and I'm yeah. still friends with him to this day. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go see him actually at, in Vegas in the next day or so when I'm out there. Oh, are they playing out there? Yeah, him and Z Rob Zombie are playing like well, Halloween. I already beat up know. someone in the front row a couple of weeks ago. Did he? Yeah, I don't know if it was oh. just internet chat, you know. But it said like uh, some fan was doing uh, some bullshit. They pulled him up on stage and beat him up. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't know oh, if it's Glenn real. Or Rob? Yeah, Glenn and a couple roadies. I don't know. I don't know. That, that could just be one of those headlines that going by you know yeah. it's it, it, it very well may be true but, <laughs> but so anyway it, so i get there like i say and i'm kind of listening so now it's my turn and i go in and i'm like i just said you know i talked to their manager was there and he's like hey you know this is glenn and he's like hey what's up man i remember i saw you play with this band and that band and blah, blah. i was like cool man thank you you know and i'm like i'm stoked thanks for having me i just said listen i never got I'm not trying to make an excuse but i never got the package of the new stuff so this is what i kind of know he's like cool no problem yeah so, like I said, it was like, it, it was pretty late, and I could see the dudes were burnt. They'd been there all day, because they were on callbacks. You yeah, know, yeah. You guys already coming back, and blah, 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 blah. I was just like, whatever. I'm, I'm going for this. Fuck it. I, yeah. You know, I ain't going to get it, but it, I, wanted, I want to be able to say I jammed with Dick Glenn, hell you know, yeah, and hell yeah, fucking man. John, you know, so do the thing. I think the first thing I I can't I think the first song we did might have been She Rides because it was kind of the easiest one. You yeah, know? I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, the bluesy one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's kind of ACDC. Yeah, yeah, very you know, it's like, kind of uh, very pockety and you know, so so it's like that. Ride On. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> She Rides, yeah. Ride On. Yeah. <laughs> so we did that, and then a Mother, and then I I went for uh, Twisted Cane. Twisted Cane, and. I think we tried to walk through a new one that they kind of roughly kind of showed me. And that was it. I was like, they were like, he was like, awesome, dude. Thanks for coming down. And I was like, thank you. Thanks for having me. This that, dude. And very, 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 very simple. Yep. Just to, you know, there was no, no weird hangups or bumps or anything. We just kind of went through it. And I was, believe me, it was loose, but it was, yeah, yeah. you know, we got through them. So I walked out, you know, and I got in the car with my chick, and I was like, ah, fucking, I don't think I did that. I don't think I got that, but I was stoked to get in there with those dudes. It was fun, you know? Yeah. And she, and she was like, dude, fuck it. You did it. You know, that's rad, you know? Go home. I think I wake up to a call. That's yeah. what it was. I yeah. woke up to a phone call. I was like, yeah, wake up. I, phone's ringing, phone's ringing. And then I'm like, hello? And then it's Glenn. Yeah. And it's his manager on a conference. Yeah. Like, hey, man. You know, it's Glenn and it's, it's uh, John Reese, blah, blah, blah. I'm John on, Reese was yeah. managing him. Oh, yeah. man, Henry's. And Goldstein. And John, Goldstein. Goldstein wow. Yeah. 
So I'm like, hey, man, what's up? And I thought, you know, they were doing the courtesy call. Just yeah, wanted to yeah. say thanks. Good know? job, man. Yeah, we went with another guy. Of course. Something happened, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So like, so uh, can you do a photo shoot today? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I swear, dude, I was still in bed. And I was like, wow, what? I'm like, they're like, yeah, you know, Glenn's like, dude, you got the gig, you know, can you, can you do wow. a photo shoot today? Uh, there's a, okay, this is now, that was Sunday night. Yeah. Okay. There's a show, free show we're doing Tuesday night at the Whiskey for the record release at Tower Records. Oh my God. Wow. I'm like, whoa. I go, you haven't even told your band. That's exactly They don't I know said, they're getting dropped. Here's the you thing. You can't be in a photo. Dude, <laughs> dude, I just said, I told him, I said, hold on, man. I, I, you know, I haven't even quit my band, dude. And then John Reese, of course, well, listen, brother. Yeah. You know, you want this gig or not? Yeah. Because it's yours right now. But if you don't, blah, 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 you know, I, I go, I just got to, can I call my band? He goes, no, you got to tell us right now if you're going to do this. I'm yeah. like, Really? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, but I got to go sit down with my bed. Okay, do what you got to do, but be yeah. at this place at this time. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. I got to race across town. Oh. I had to sit down with them. And you tell them, look, we're getting dropped. You guys don't know? I, I just said, hey, man, you know, I spoke to management. I mean, I spoke to, you know, somebody at the label, and I spoke to Kenny, our lawyer at the time, and I said, there's kind of a holdup right now. Yeah. So I'm going to do this until we're ready. Because we were already kind of writing already on yeah. the road for the second record. Totally, yeah. So there was a lot of stuff that had been written. Um, whether or not I was going to make the record was another story. But we had started that process. So <clears throat> I said, you know, I, I'm going to take this tour and work while um, we figure out what's next for us, you know. Yeah, that way you're not sitting around. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it looks legit. You know, they were bombed. You know, yeah. they, they, they were just like, dude, I, you know, thought we were a band. I'm like, dude, we are a band. You know, it's like, but honestly, it's like, I don't want to, I mean, me personally, I don't want a nine to five again. Yeah. You know, and that's what I'm going back to the minute we come off the road. And, and Driving like, a van. I talked to so many band guys about it. You know, it was like I was talking to Troy. You know, they're out in failure, you know, and then yeah. he comes home and he's, He's fucking, you know, looking for a job. Hustling, dude. You know, <laughs> it's, it's like, like a hustle. Oh. But as we all know, it's like, especially when you're young, you know, and, and I really, I know this is still in me as a, just a person. There's a, there's a thing of loyalty and commitment, you know? Yeah. And it's tough, especially when you're going through it like that with your first like band that's signed. Yeah. You guys you know? got a record deal. You're on Geffen. You yeah, did a lot of we've tours. Been living in a van, you yeah. know, for, for X amount, uh, over a year already together and just everything. So I just said, look, I'm not quitting. Yeah. I just, I want to be able to do this. Cause that was the first thing too, is they were going, we were starting a States tour and going straight to Europe and straight to South America and all this kind of shit. With Danzig? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, it, you're in the big leagues now. Yeah. It was, it, it, and that's just it. It was kind of like, okay, I, I, I want to, you know, and, and it was funny too, because a lot of people who were fans of the band of Sugar Tooth and all that, in the business, yeah, everybody called me. We're like, dude, that's so awesome for you. This is yeah. great for you. Yeah, mind you, they know. Yeah, you they know. know the biz exactly. And you know, and again, for me, it was a real honor because I'm coming in after my favorite drummer in the fucking world, who yeah. I saw play with Black Flag and the Circle Jerks and DOA, and it's like, you know, my guy. Yeah, you know, yes, it's going to be difficult, but at the same time, I'm like, dude, this is I, this is what I want to do. You know, it's so. funny too because you're taking the place of a guy. Which is the number one thing, uh, bummer for drummers. It all comes down to money and contracts. Yeah. And that's why you were taking his place. And and later you realize what goes down with that later on sure. with Queens or whatever. Right. But my point is, the, one of the main reasons I want to have drummers on here is I'm just tired of them getting the short change. You know, because... I've been there. Yeah. I've been there. And I said, there's two style drummers. When you're in the studio writing, if there's one outside going, yeah, hit me when you guys got it. And he's smoking cigarettes and on the phone with his lady, he's out. Right. But if there's a guy in there and he's in there every day as I'm creating these tunes, he throws in beats that lead me somewhere. Yeah. That opened my mind of, I never thought of playing this halftime. Sure. Or I never thought of playing this fucking 4-4, four, four, you know, 4 yeah. on the 4, or or fast, up-tempo, whatever. Right. And that's part of the creative thing. That is, and it's a big part of, you know... And I, it's a big part of the business why drummers now are starving. Yeah, you know, absolutely. For big then, drummers from fucking... I mean, Densmore got lucky because they split 
put everything four ways. Yeah. So he never had to do that door stuff if he didn't want to do it. Right. But there's so many that's drummers. How, we were sugar dude. That's how it was too. Everything was split yeah. evenly. I was always involved in the writing. I mean, look at Lee Von Helm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. This motherfucker sang the songs, played drums, and uh, was in the whole process. Right. The whole entire time. And, you know, and it's. And when there's room for that, that's awesome. But as you know, yeah. sometimes people have ideas and control yeah. and they want yeah. it done this way. So it's it's difficult because it is. you don't want to be you don't want to be just that dude being told what to do, how to do it. Right, right. Because it's like I mean, I could see with Trent Reznor. He's in a studio. He makes the entire record. And well, goes, that's what I say. There's, yeah. there's people that do that. Yeah, there's that's what I'm saying. That do that's that. a different gig. <clears throat> yeah. Because then you're a hired man and you know, and that's the, that's a different gig to me. Yeah. I'm talking about organically writing a record, which always happens usually with demos and stuff. Sure. In a studio in the fucking valley like mates. That's it. And you're coming up with shit. You're in there two, three weeks. That's how we did it. Yeah. yeah. And you come up with stuff, you know. And that's how we did Queens for a lot, for most of it right. as well, too. There was times, you know, obviously Josh had an idea of, of the song from beginning to end, but it was a lot of playing shit over and over. Yeah. And, you know, and that's why I was... You know, the records that I was involved in, I was included in publishing. Right, you know? exactly. See, that's so, that's the fair route to go. Yeah. Because, you know, like I always say, like I said, when I have drummers on here, I know how important they are to a band. And they're so important that Zeppelin never got back together again. I mean, dude, come <laughs> on. You know, that's <laughs> I mean, the thing. It's like, yeah, I mean, that's how fucking important it is. It is, you know, and it's also, there's a thing too, though, because I hate to say it, dude, but it's sad because... Drummers do get the short end of the stick a lot of the time because they allow it, number one. Yeah. And number two, drummers are kind of fucking crazy, man. You and know, they're lazy like, too, it's, I it's find. Like it can, it can, it, you know, that's why the minute, I mean, literally, the minute I was, you know, I, you know, me and Queens went our, our separate ways, you know, I stopped for a moment, recollected, got my, you know, my, because it was, a, you know, over 10 years with, Two specific bands that are very, very specific. Yeah, you know, Danzig. Eagles Queens. No, well, I mean, oh, Eagles. Eagles. Oh, yeah, Eagles. Queens, yeah, yeah. Queens, you know? Gotcha. So the the dynamic of me actually playing with other people with other fe- it was it was a challenge to me to get back out there again and rediscover to because I was so in a formula of what. The well, band that's had. very much one thing that yeah. de- that whole desert thing. It's all it's Chris Goss, Josh, yeah, and that whole fucking uh, thing of you know from all the way ground one, sure. Caius and sure. Masters of Reality. All the way through the desert sessions, mm-hmm. Queens, Eagles of Death Metal, yeah. all that stuff, all of it, you, you know? know. And then and 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 that was it too. It was like, it was a really huge part of my life and my career, and so epic to me. You Absolutely, know? it's and, a, you know, like I love I, every second of it. I mean, it was obviously like anything we discussed earlier. It's band life, band yeah. life, and especially band life with success yeah can get very messy and get very difficult and get very and, and it doesn't have to be for the most you know if everybody yeah. kind of if you have communication sure you're good but as you see from the metallica movie which a lot of people clown on you know like oh god they yeah. had that fucking psychiatrist come in and stuff yeah. but things bottle up absolutely man and, resentments and, you know and that's a thing too it's like a lot of people, a lot of things, it's just not their personality to be like, hey, uh, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And if it is, they're either walking on eggshells, worried about their job or their gig, and, yep. or they don't really care. Yeah. You know, they're along for a ride. Comfort. A comfort thing, exactly. And you know what? With all due respect to anybody in this business, to be doing it as long as we, some of us have been doing and, and have made a career and a life, and it's like, you got to respect that. You got, you, you know, you have to respect it. And I think you also have to, you have to be a bit, no, more, not a bit. You have to be completely respectful of music as a whole because it's just bigger than all of us it's yeah. gonna, it's going to survive long after all of us are gone and everything else totally you know, what you leave here and this and, and that's like for me i i so far you know everything i've done that i've created and been a part of i still really value up you know i haven't you know thank god dude you know this hasn't turned into this i'm just taking any fucking gig and i'm just trying to survive and yeah. put the hat on and put the pants on and the suit. it's like no dude yeah it's like, it's like yeah yeah the puppet show you know it's like it's like 
Just, I know drummers out there like that, you know. I mean, and you know what, dude? Like I say, no disrespect, but I, you know, I just never been that person. You yep. know, I've all all the bands I've been in, I've been in for a very long time. You know, it's like I was in Danzig for like I think eight years, and then it was yeah. Queens, ten, eleven, and then you know Eagles. It was like seven or whatever it was eight, and you know, playing in all the records. You know, between between Lanigan and Eagles and all the stuff. Yeah, you know? it's like so. You know, it was it was a. You know, sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad to have your whole life kind of be about that. But it's one same, brand, yeah, gotcha, yeah. But it's a good brand. But it's a great. That's brand. the thing. Either you, you know? play with Jack White or you play with Josh. Yeah, I say, you know, and like, you're going to be involved in great shit. You know, and that's the thing. It's like I, 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 to this day, it's like there's not a there's not a second that I regret yeah. at all because it was all. I'm proud of it. You know, between the records, between Lullabies and Era, and then the last one that I'm half on, you know, and this and that, and all the other stuff, the Eagle stuff I've played on the records, and Desert Sessions, like you said, and yeah. all of it. It's stuff that I'm very proud of, along with, you know, along with the stuff that I did, like Sugar Tooth, and you know, and and anything else, you know, that I, that I thankfully have been a part of, you know, and it's like, I I still truly love to play the drums. So yeah. it's like, you know, let's talk. Let's talk a little bit what. When you what got you started? You're into punk rock, but uh, I was reading you're into war. You're into Zeppelin. My parents were just big into music, man. Big yeah. time into music. You know, they weren't players, but they listened to music constantly. So. Yeah. And you're you're growing up out in Gardenia. Yeah. Are you the only the son, Bay, only yeah. kid? Yeah. No, oh. I got a sister at the time. I have a younger brother now too. Came way later. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, my and my parents were pretty young. You know, and right. my, my mom was like 16 when she had me and my wow. dad was 19. So. Uh, what are, are you Hispanic? Yeah. Mexican, yeah, Hispanic, yeah. 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 Just Mexican American, all born here. Right. You know, so, so yeah, that's uh, so the young. That's got to be but, tough. You know, my dad was really way into you know cars and low ride and choppers and shit. So yeah. I mean, you know, so the so the culture of all that that comes along with it, the music and this and that. You know, it, it was like that's what I grew up on. So that's what I was like turned on to very early on. Yeah, you know, it went, like I say, it ranged from you know stuff like War to Zeppelin to, to the to CCR yeah. to, to whatever. You it's know? just like you're exactly the same age as me, and it's all about seventies. Yeah. It's like BMX, skateboard, skateboarding, you know, Rolls Royce, car wash yeah. record, you yeah, know, you know? Uh, uh, Richard Pryor comedy, yeah, Cheech and car, Chong, yeah, exactly. You dude. know what I mean? Everything all is fucking straight up. You and got that was my parents' record collection. Yeah, Cheech and Chong comedy records to Zeppelin to war to oldies to whatever you know yeah. it's like, that's what it was and they they told me like you know i just always remember being like there was there was music in the house there was music in the car there was music in the garage what you know, your dad do my dad's a truck driver wow no I shit truck driver, he probably listens yeah. to my podcast yeah <laughs> <laughs> all truck drivers you know, listen yeah, to this that's, they know. always hit me up man you kept me up last night man I couldn't find any bumpy roads so I rocked it let them be tall that's like awesome that. though yeah. dude truck yeah. drivers are badass truck you know? drivers still, is, is cool. he still alive yeah oh yeah, yeah. My and he's still truck alive. driver he's retired retired yeah, yeah yeah wow but you know it was like you know it's, was he a freelance trucker or did he truck yeah, drive he worked for like a, for a bunch of different things I you just know? drove anything produce yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever all of it yeah wow so cool dude yeah. or mean guy Pops is way cool man wow my mom and dad are like i'm still like still this married man. huh yeah 50 years holy shit that is so year, cool man. yeah and you know anybody who's met my dad and my parents they're just like man your parents are so because they really are they're just really yeah, I guess yeah. Say, everybody you know always has great things to say but about their parents and and but i can re honestly say you know my parents are such genuine people you yeah. know all my friends through all my life even ex-girlfriends I've all remained friends with my parents because my wow. parents are you know, yeah. cool you know and they're just chill so when you get the dancing gig do they come dude my oh dude my parents yeah still to this day yeah get to rap down with Glenn whenever they see him or he's, he's always like there's your mom and dad dude they're like you know coming from Glenn bro yeah, people yeah. trip out they're yeah, like, yeah. they hear it like did he just ask how your mom and dad were I'm like dude my parents love him and he yeah. was like you know he was he was great to them and then you know it's like so but yeah, it's like they came to all the... Dude, my parents came to see me in Wasted Youth when I was playing my punk first punk band. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they come to see me play all the time, you know? It's wow. Like they never they never missed anything. They yeah. never missed anything I ever did, you know? And they were coming to gigs, punk rock gigs to see me play, you know? And That is sick. Yeah, and you know, they were... They, they always let me throw parties. Down. It was fun, you know? They were great, you know? I remember the first time seeing you play. So uh, I think I saw Sugar Tooth, but I didn't realize you were in the band. Yeah. Um, Possibly. But here's here's when I see you play. So I'm a huge Queens fan. Right. 
and I'm living in San Fran. Oh, you my mean. buddy says they're playing the Virgin Record Store. I was just talking about that the other day. Oh my God! So uh, he gets these like super passes. So we're just like we're sitting on like some road cases, right? Which is dope. It was in that small little corner. I remember that place? And man. Uh, and that here, was my first gig. Right. That's right. That's right. My so first gig. everybody's like, "Oh yeah, you know, uh, girls not in the band yeah. anymore," and people are all like, you know, <laughs> acting like the band's over. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And first of all, I. What what people don't understand is I like grow and and everything, but it was the songs. It didn't mean fucking jack shit who played drums if the songs were bad. These songs were unbelievable. Yeah. Hanging tree. Yeah. I mean all this shit. So yeah. I'm sitting there. You come in. You're playing way low on the ground. I'm like this guy's sitting on the ground because I love drummers. Yeah, I was always I into like really Josh Freeze for years. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, well, this guy's fucking body's gonna fall apart. <laughs> And so you 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 start up. It's like, and I'm like, holy fuck! Yeah. And I'm thinking this is the hardest gig because everybody's like, all all day long, and pr probably for the whole year, are saying, oh yeah, fucking, you Who's know, coming in after Grohl, yeah, yeah, Grohl's gone, Grohl's gone. And I was like, hey yeah. man, I saw this fucking it's it's better. Wow, you Thank know what you, I mean? And you. it was I, like a freight train was hitting me. And then Lanigan would come in the yeah, side. Yeah, dude, it was a good time. Oh that was a great, God. great time. I watched that, that band, gig you know? and then I fell in love with your drumming. Thank and you, I was like, man. that Thank guy you. is fire. And I, I saw you many times after. Girl's a great Thank guy. I am you. not knocking him. No, no, no. I know what you mean. I, but listen. what I'm saying is this felt like a fucking, like a diesel truck coming at you. You know, that I have to say, it's it was it was crazy for me. And you know, and I think I don't know. I mean, it just it just it just happened that way. The way it all kind of came together. It was one night of I went down with Josh. We jammed. Did you just did you try out or? Yeah, it was like I I and the thing was it was another one of those things where yeah. I got a call. I came home off a dancing tour, and I ran into Josh's roommate at the time. This friend of ours, Nigel, who was a photographer. And oh, I, I know. Was, him. I went, yeah, I know him. yeah, okay, absolutely. I went, I went to see. We were, I was going to see Amen at the Viper. Room. Oh yeah, Amen Casey. Was playing. Yeah, yeah. Who was Shannon Larkin? Yeah. Killer drummer. Yeah, Another Shannon. fucking lunatic Jeez. with his arms swinging love and him, stuff, you love know? Him. Wow. So I went to, was going to see that, going to see that, and I saw Nigel, and I was like, oh, dude, I heard, you know, heard they found somebody. Because somebody kind of called me prior, like, I heard they're looking for a drummer. You should check this out. I was out with Glenn, you know, and I was yeah. just like, oh, dude, I'm on tour. I can't bail on this tour. Blah, blah, yeah, blah, hell yeah. Blah. So came home, saw these dudes. They said no. They, they were like... Nigel was like, dude, I think you should call Josh, dude. You know, he's like, I don't think they found, I don't think they're set yet. I go, Are you sure, dude? Because you know, I heard they were, and I heard, I heard the guy's name, and I know him. Who, who was it? I, I read, I'd rather. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always wonder who was might have been in the seat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I was like, all right, do you take my give. Him, I said, yeah, give him my number. Yeah, yeah. Gives it. Apparently. Josh didn't come home for a couple of days. He was yeah. doing his thing, you know. Yep. And, they were and, getting you, ready to... and you knew him from the Kai's thing, yeah. like you yeah, said. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that, I can't even remember the last time I had seen him, but it was overseas at a festival when when Queens was just a three piece. Oh, oh no, yeah. it was a four with Davey catching. Rated our record? Was, no, it was the first record. Oh, the first one, yeah. So it was Nick and uh, Fredo, too. So, But, anyways, so it, I, like I say, didn't think of anything of it. And then, oh, this is what it was. I forgot the biggest part about it. I had been on the road with Goat Snake oh. opening for Queens Goat Snake, in amazing. Europe. Oh wow! In the UK on R. On so the, he's seeing you play. Yeah, that's that's how it, that's how it kind of we kind of got on each other's radar. Again. Right. I went over there with with Goat Snake opening for Queens on the last UK run they were doing for R. Right. And I was you know I was already talking to them over there just about what their plan was you know and they were coming home to start Def. Yeah. Oh, awesome, man! It's great, you know. And I had a great time. It was like it was a, it was just a UK run that we yeah, did, so it was the right. whole UK. So that's how kind of we kind of got re, you know, hooked up again as far as in each other's radar, like I said, or on each other's radar. So come home, this and that. The next thing I know, Nigel tells me that you know Gene's not doing the record, and they're oh no, they they that they, they had done the record without Gene, and I was like. Oh yeah, I kind of heard that. I didn't know it was done though. And they're like, "Oh yeah, but Dave did it." Yeah. But now Dave can't do it. So I was like, "What?" And I was like, "Oh, that's a bummer." He's, "I'm gonna take your number." And I was like, "All right, well, 
I thought I thought they already had somebody because I heard they were leaving next week because I was trying to go see him at Amoeba. Yeah, yeah. That was the yeah, whole yeah. thing. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm gonna go check him out at Amoeba. <laughs> so because I had been already at the the Troubadour show. Yeah, yeah. With Dave. Oh, those are the big ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like I say, then a tour started, but then Dave went out and the thing. And so, the next thing I know, like I say, I get a call and it's Josh. And he's like, hey, man, uh, can I talk to you about something? And blah, blah. So, I'm like, yeah, what's going on? And we kind of shoot the shit about it. And he's like, you know, and it was it was a weird time because it was, he was, you know, he was getting so much shit thrown at him at that time about this record because how great it was. It know? really you was. Know, everybody already knew. I went what down there, watched record. a track in at Conway. Yeah. I was know? when I've heard some of it, I was like, what the fuck? That yeah. shit is insane. Yeah. So yeah. and I heard I I literally only heard what I saw yeah. at the troop. Right. Did they play the whole record? Yeah, yeah. Right. So, right. But I mean it, but I wasn't able to really grab it. Yeah, you it can't you second. can't take it all it was in. all one time I heard it. Oh yeah, yeah. that's bitching, you know that. Yeah. So uh he had told me that you know Dave wasn't going to do the tour now. He had he wasn't going to do it after all, and they were still looking for somebody. And I was like, okay, well, what's the deal? And he goes, well, we're we're splitting in about a week, you know. But this is this, is, and I mean, literally, he ran it down to me. It's this much work. It's like two years worth of work. Wow. TV, blah blah. blah. And I'm like, going, whoa, dude, fuck, I'm fuck. Like, he goes, I'm going to send you some stuff. Do you feel like jamming? Just just a real loose jam. He's yeah. like, I, you know, I'll send you a couple songs and then we'll just jam on some of the old stuff. And I was, you know, obviously a fan too, very familiar with all the other. Of course. I'm like, yeah, cool. So we line up this day to try to get together. Yep. And I think a day or so later, he calls me and he says, bro, my grandmother passed away. I'm jetting. I, I gotta go home to the dads, and I, there's no way I'm gonna be able to make this happen right now. I just wanted to say I'm, I apologize. Oh. I, was like, yeah, I said, bro, no problem. I get it. Thanks for even thinking about me, but you know, good luck with everything. And obviously, I'm sorry to hear about what happened. So that's like the middle of the week. Yeah. I literally was like, okay, cool. You know, not, stop listening just, to the tape. Yeah, just you know, <laughs> I mean, it was like you know, I'm cool. All right, so now I go about my biz. I was up at Drum Workshop, my drum company, getting ready to to put in an order for a new yeah. kid. DW? Saying, yeah, yeah, DW. Ventura? Yeah. You're out yeah. there. Um, so I was up there doing that, and my phone rings, right? And I'm all, I kind of think I know this number. Hello? It's Lanigan. Yeah. And he's like, hey, man, I was just with Josh, you know, you got time to talk? And I was like, what's up? And he's like, Josh is coming back early, dude. I think we should maybe try to do this. And yeah. I'm like, now, do you do know what? You, 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 Lanigan knows? Yeah, Lanigan was on. Lanigan was just starting his first run with them when I was on that Goat Snake tour. Right, gotcha. I got to know okay. him then. Oh, got gotcha. Him yeah, then. yeah. What a god Lanigan is. The best. I, I really can't the believe best. how great that guy he's, is. I mean, you know, he's. I mean, we all know. Yeah. It's like, it, it's, I can't even put it into words, man. When you watch it and you hear and you see what's happening with that dude, man. It's incredible. Talk about underrated. Just I mean, fucking badass. It's, it, he's, to me, he's like the Bukowski of rock. Hey, dude. He's, you know what yeah, I mean? He's, he's got crazy mystique. His voice is amazing. Yeah. He, the way he stands up there, great. it's like Tom Waits smashes into Springsteen. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, what the fuck? He's you just know? a badass, man. I love him. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great dude, too, and I really miss him, too. But, I mean, we, we still communicate and say, hey, what's up? Uh, but anyway, so kind of runs it by me what they're talking about you know and he goes yeah i'm meeting him meeting him later and so, so i'm like uh okay sure what's the deal he goes well josh's gonna call you tonight yeah like, okay so he calls me and it's now friday yeah okay so he goes hey dude i just i really think that we should try this you know i don't want to leave on this tour without at least knowing that yeah we just played together yeah yeah I said, okay. Secretly, because yeah. they already kind of got a guy. Yeah. So wow. it was, yeah. So okay. I was like, okay. I said, whatever. You, I mean, what's the harm? You know what yeah, I mean? yeah. Absolutely. I'm down. So he goes, let's let's shoot for Sunday. I'm like, okay. He's like, I'm sending you something right now, a, a CD. To, uh, you'll have it today. Yeah. So sends me the CD. You got it this time. 
I got it. <laughs> but this is the same kind of situation. Yeah. Sends me the CD, man. It's it's on a it's a burn CD. Oh, and it doesn't work. No title. No, it's on there. Uh. But there's no title, so it sounds oh. it's it's burning and it's playing as one big song because you know with the commercial. Oh yeah, on, yeah, yeah. So I can't even go like song one, two. I'm like, fuck. How am I gonna? Do? I'm so I'm like going. All right, I'm just blasting this record, dude. You well, know, just oh. just trying to get. You don't even know the names of the no, tracks. No title. That's funny. It's like, hey, play Hang a Tree. Which one is that one? It's like. That's how we did it. That's how we did it. So, you know, so then, so this is now I'm going in with him Sunday. So he goes, all right, let's just meet Sunday at our place at noon. I'm like, okay. I call my drum tech. I'm like, hey, bro, can you get me a kit together just to throw in? And then, then I call the dudes back. No, they're like, dude, don't worry about the kid. They've got a kit there. Just come play. I'm like, cool. Fair enough. Easy. Going to be, you know, again, I'm not thinking of anything. And, And seriously, and this is weird because I really, because I was involved with my band, Danzig, and I was a fan of Queens. Yeah. I loved everything they did. But I didn't keep up with like, like you say, like everybody was already going like this record and the people. I mean, I already yeah, knew yeah. it was great because I yeah. just liked the Queens. I loved the Queens. I thought yeah. everything they did was great. Yeah. So to, to Three me, singers. People, you know, I yeah, loved all pe- that. You know, but people were making a big thing like this record, this is going to be the one. This is the one. And I was kind of like, okay. Yeah. Cool. You know, they, they, they've always been the one the records have always well, been the one to me. To me, I, R was, was, in, R was you know? a masterpiece yeah. to me. You know? So I was just like, cool, okay. you know. But then I kind of started, you know, kind of like was talking to my chick and she's like, oh no, you know, this is, you know, yeah, everybody did this. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, this is a real big deal. I'm like, okay, you know, I, yeah. I guess, yeah. So Yeah, because Queens weren't big. People don't understand. They weren't big. No. Uh, after the rated R, I mean, they were playing well, like Caius wasn't big. Yeah, you know, well, Caius, realize, Caius you know? I saw him at the bottom of the hill. Yeah, you, know you know what I mean? They opened first on a three band bill yeah. with Danzig when I saw him. Yeah. You know, they and and R was uh, people loved R, but they didn't fucking just play the Warfield or something or yeah. the Palladium. No, you know what I mean? No, they were no. they were like still I like think they did the L Ray that year. Yeah, they exactly. Still doing the L Ray, you know. On R. But uh, but anyway, so it was like I'm like okay. So I go in on Sunday, and of course, what'd you learn out of that? I learned the one da da, and I think I can get through that. Oh yeah, the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, let's try that. So we, we tried that, and he was like, "Okay, cool." And he was like, "Okay, try this on that part. This is what's happening there." Okay, cool. We did that, so we moved on, and then I think we did Millionaire. Yeah, I did the first one. Blah blah blah. Okay, we tried did that, and then the next one I think we did. Well, I don't even think we did Millionaire. I think is, is Lanigan there? We either did two songs or three. In a, yeah, Lanigan's yeah. there. Yeah. Fucking, of course. I'm walking in like, oh, dude, Lanigan's here. <laughs> there was, you know, so. What do you got? You got Nick, Lanigan, you on drums, Josh, and Troy. And Troy. Yeah. And Troy <laughs> shows up late, you know, and it was kind of like, and I knew Troy from just being from L.A. You know? Yeah, yeah. Hey, and he's like, hey. Because you know, Josh didn't really tell anybody what oh, was happening. Oh, unbelievable. Other than, other than Nick. Yeah, you know, like, hey, what's Lanigan, going on so. here? <laughs> so it was kind of like a little bit, it was a bit awkward, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, it was like, again, nothing was decided. It was just, just jam with them. And I guess they, they've they been obviously jam with a ton of fuckers for right. weeks now. So um, You can tell what happens when you're in a band and you choose a guy, maybe prematurely you're just like fuck it this sounds good and then it starts to burn in your brain like a grenade yeah you're like this guy it's not the guy yeah and it'll start fucking ticking on you man you'll be like it's it's just not how it should be yeah. especially when you're coming off Grohl, uh who played the whole record yeah so yeah. And then he toured and then he toured for he a lot he, yeah he did this yeah there, you know? like two so, weeks or whatever whatever it was Coach, you know so it yeah was like, now we have this taste you know yeah obviously. yeah so. and, and and that's a uh uh grohl is a, a a thing of course it's not a lot of guys that do that thing it's like yeah. phil rudd you know what i mean yeah so so we did uh like i said i think we did no one knows i can't remember if we did if we did millionaire or not but then we did it we did avon he was like what do you want to do and i said how about avon yeah. He's like, oh, okay, cool. So we clicked into that, you know, and it was like, and you know, me personally, that's my ultimate fucking Queens record. I love the first record. Right, yeah. I just love That's my record. least favorite, which it's is so funny. weird. I, I remember I know. you talking about that. Yeah, I heard you yeah. talking about that. Yeah. Oh, wow. I was so, such a Caius fan. Yeah. Such a Caius fan. And then when that comes out, I put it on and I was like, oh. I was really bummed. Really? And I, and I barely listen to it now. That record fucking... I still, to this day... Wow. I, that record 
blew my fucking mind. You know, I might have to re-venture into that record because it could be one of those things where I held Kaya so high yeah. that I was like, I think that's probably you know what I mean. Like, that's God, fuck common. this. That's common. Yeah, with yeah. A lot of, with like, a lot Kai, of Kaya's why, why would he leave Kaya's and do this? Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. yeah, I might have to re-engage that because should, dude. when R comes out, I was I love like, R too. Oh, I really love R too. Oh my R, god, R was really like I think. Obviously, I think R yeah. is where they found Queens sound. really found got the identity exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. with with tones and with two singing, and, and you know, he fucking yeah. guitars. You know, yeah, that's with everything. Boop, 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 you know, yeah, that oh, kind yeah. of fucking Pac Man yeah, shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, so anyway, you, so we kick an A, my yep. man, and that's your wheelhouse. You know, I'm just like, and then so we anyway. So I'm, I'm I just wanted to play it. So yeah. I was like, fuck yeah, 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 yeah. So we rocked, you know, and then all of a sudden he stops me in the middle of it. He's like, okay, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on. And he's like, I'll be right back. I gotta make a call. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, well, this is over. You know, in I'm the like, middle of the song. Uh, yeah, I think it was like it was like halfway through the middle of the song. Oh man, and then. He walks out, you know, and I'm, I don't know what's, none of us know what's going on, really. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. And he walked back in, and you know how Josh is. He's just like, he goes, okay, dude, I just fired the other guy. You're the guy. I'm like, whoa. Again, I'm like, dude, wait, whoa. whoa. He's like, dude, there's nothing to think about, dude. You got, this is it. And I'm like, oh. Uh, what can you imagine what's that's how much it was bugging him. He's playing, and in the middle of the song, he goes, hold on, hold on. I got to make a call. Yeah. And leaves the room and comes back and goes, fire that guy. Let's do it. Yeah. I mean, that is awesome. And he goes, okay, we, can take, we need to take about an hour or so, break all of this. I got to make some calls. You yeah. got to make some calls. Yeah. Let's, let's get back here in a couple hours and we'll start the re rehearsal process because the first show's tomorrow at the Virgin Oh, Mass my God. So I see you the next day. Dude, that was, dude I was so fried. Dude, my, I couldn't make heads or tails. Like, yeah. seriously, it was just like, at that point, I was just, I think... You know, we I split. The band looked like zombies too. Oh, that, dude. that was one thing I remember, and I was yeah. like, "Because well, they had been through a lot." I, man. I already knew they party too. So when they show up, I'm like, "Yeah, well, they these, were working these with guys. the other guys." Yeah, you know? and that's the other thing too. From you know, from what I when I found out the whole story, they were still going back and forth between two or three guys. You know, and it was like, it was it was break, it was killing them. You know, yeah. they were just like, "Fuck, man!" It's it's like, how do you tell? Because some guys some play this stuff better, some guys play the old stuff yeah. better, some guys play the new stuff better. It's like, you know, and it's it, it was the same for me. Yeah, believe me, man. I it I had to really some really of the do stuff you were great yeah, on. Of course, so it was just like you know you can't expect. First of all, you're talking about four other drummers before that point. Yeah, so you got Fredo, you got four Nick, different you feels, got Gene, and you got Grohl. Yeah, that's a lot. You know, and then Josh plays on some of this stuff, so it's like right. there's a lot of lot of it's all different going. feels and everything. Different feels. There's not one guy you can just cop. It's, you know. It's hard. Yeah. You know, so I had to really kind of I did a lot of work and it took me a couple of years really to, to really kind of nail all the really because it's a lot that's a lot a lot of material yeah. you know? and they did so many songs that weren't on the records you know there was this and that so it was like you know it was a it was rough and then yeah. I was I literally had to we jumped in it was like the tour started so I was learning as we went on the just road. on the bus or something yeah just wow. fucking headphones and how many day. songs Sound set 20 track. songs set or Dude, something back then we used to do Dude, we almost used to do like two fucking hours. Yeah, I remember it was like a Zeppelin long, show, man. It was long shows, and the long jams and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, those so. jams were incredible, though, man. So I great. loved them. Just this, this the desert psychic yeah. between them and Mars Volta. Yeah. They were just like these modern day Zeppelin so Santana fun, yeah. things, you know. Yeah. So it was like you know, so it was, and again, it was a great fucking band, man. It was like we really, it really was. It was, it was, it was. It was Nick a, is. I feel I, I love Queens. And, and and I think the last record is uh, probably the best for me. The mm -hmm. last one, uh, yeah, it I was. You talking about it that. was insane. Yeah. Which I was like, how are you gonna top you know these yeah. other records? But I really felt like it was such a. It, it felt dark, right. and it had a really like, whoa, this is great. Yeah. It was different, very you know? different, it very works. different, very different. Um, but I also feel I need Nick in there, man. I still need Nick. Yeah. I still get, me and Nick do a lot of stuff together, thankfully, that, which is awesome. And He's I'm, done the podcast twice. He painted that King Diamond mask for me. Oh, killer, yeah. man. I didn't know that. Yeah, I love him. He's such a, yeah, you know what I love too, about yeah. Nick and Josh together is it feels like at any time the thing could fucking explode. Well, look, it's so man, much danger. You know, that was, 
That's how that lineup was with us, with yeah. myself, Troy. I was talking Nick. about how Nick was playing naked, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. oh, man. Yeah. That, Stone I, naked. Not Troy a in a suit, a Nick fuck. naked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nick was having that... Uh, Towards that uh, era, Nick was having that meltdown when he threw the bottle in the crowd and stuff. Yeah, he did he, a lot of crazy shit. Man, you know? he was out of his mind. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> it was, it was, you know, man. I hear about that tour from so many people who actually were there and know the, it, how nuts it was. People that were around us because it was, it was a crazy, crazy world. Yeah. for us to be in, just the, as much as we were playing, it was nonstop. Yeah, you know, it was nonstop. You know, everybody was doing their thing, raging however they felt necessary. Yep. But it was, it was one of the, it was probably the best time of my life. That, well, it's so that, real rock and roll, right? Like it was so dangerous, and like you said earlier, it was. We could, we were a band that could literally push something so fucking close to the edge where it was about to fall apart. Yeah. And magically reel it back in because yeah. it was weird. It was like you know, and I and I'm speaking for myself, and I, we've 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 had this conversation with all of us at times. But it really was something where there was a there was a really insane connection. Yeah. Where it just happened. You know what I mean? Well, I felt like it was heroes. Like these aren't your good looking rock stars. You know what I mean? Yeah, to yeah. me, I've never been the, the it was sexy a gang, bro. Man. It was like yeah. a gang. It was it's, a it's just thing. dirty desert guys. You it know, and 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 there's no sex symbol in the band. Even though a lot of chicks <laughs> yeah. like Josh, you know what I mean? He's a big, tall, good looking yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. But he's not like your classic front man, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and Nick is not your classic bass player like at the t- like yeah. you look at like Interpol and you got Carlos sure. who, who's like a lady killer, you know? Yeah. Um but to me it was like it seemed like oh yeah this is uh, obtainable not the caliber of music but those guys made it they're yeah. one of us you yeah. know what i mean you know it's like it's it's funny too because to this day it's like i you know thankfully you know i've had a lot of you know with it just in general with everything you know a lot of the fans are still very supportive and want to yeah. know what i'm doing and all this kind of stuff and and that's something that they never forget you know they're yeah. always like man it's 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 really cool that you know you you actually hit me back on an Instagram where you you actually said hello or you know I'm like really it's like yeah just, I do that all like the time guys, too man. me yeah, too you know, it's like I'm just I'm, I'm not just even like close you, to famous it's like I'm fucked that whole rock star shit yeah. I mean, you know it is people what it think is. I'm famous you know what I mean like they're like it's so cool a famous guy hit me back I'm like I'm f- dude I'm fucking I'm looking for a but place I mean, to I, live but, right? I, but I see I, I understand why they would think that yeah, yeah. you know you know, they they see yeah. you on TV they hear your voice they know you on the did. They they can relate and I and I guess I understand that and and it's an all, again it's it's something I'm very grateful to kind of be on both sides of you know to yeah because like, you know it's like I like when somebody's like, I like you calls too. me he's like hey dude come do my pod and I was like oh yeah right yeah, on absolutely yeah. man. but then I, I don't mind going and doing fucking a, yeah. you know a tour with my bros where I'm in a van again and yep. playing fucking hardcore setting up my own shit it's like. Let's. I let, love that, you know. Let's talk about why I called you. Of course, I've had all kinds of Queens guys on, yeah, and I love Queens and and everything about it. But I see you a couple weeks ago. I had no idea that you were drumming in Zach Wild's uh, Zach Sabbath. Yeah. So yeah. here I am in this sold out fucking box. Where did you go? Yeah, I was there. Oh, That's why I hit you up, dude. Killer. So, I thought you just saw the the, the photos. Oh no, it's... fuck! I took pictures and oh, stuff, man. Bitching, I put them up dude. there, but um. You know, Bosco hits me. I love this guy. He's yeah. he's been such a fucking great, great guy, man. Years, yeah. And I was gonna open those shows. Oh, dude, it, that would have been funny. yeah. <laughs> and then there was just like you know, then the what was the opener? Um, uh, uh, Fireball Ministry. Fire, Fireball Ministry. And then there wasn't like I was gonna host the night both nights. Oh, and that would have been I, awesome. I was man. really fired up because I I toured with Zach back in the day. Uh, I what? booked this tour for uh, Pride and Glory. Oh, right. Uh, not Pride and Glory, but uh, uh, um, Leonard Skinhead. Skinhead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I booked dude. the tour for that, and we went out, and it was a uh, an eight day or six days of drunken haze. Oh, dude. And I haven't I seen back haven't then. seen Zach since, and I've and I was oh way, no shit. Well, yeah, I've, I've seen him a bunch. Yeah, live, yeah, yeah. But I'm I, not actually hung, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm dying to have him on, you know, because I beat him in arm wrestling years ago, and he was furious. <laughs> he was furious. <laughs> oh, dude, that I got him. Oh, awesome! Story. You gotta get him up here. Bro. Oh yeah, I, I'm trying to, but he, or I'll go to his house. I don't yeah. care. But Blasco is a great man, and cool he shit. came to see me do comedy. Um, 
And he said, hey, you know what would be a great idea is if you open these shows? I said, fuck, yeah. I don't even care if it goes bad. I just want to be there. I don't care because, you know, <laughs> that's gangster. That. But so I had no idea you're in the band. And there I am. And it happens to be one of the hottest days ever in L.A., you know, two weeks ago. What yeah. are we in fucking October? And it's 109 that day yeah. or whatever. Then it's like. 200 in the viper room what what night did you go i went Friday? saturday oh killer. second night yeah and i go in there and it's actually an oven and oh, it I, was fucking i did man. one spot uh, i just stand up so i did one spot and then i rushed to see you guys and then i did a late spot so it's like a ping pong a pong around hollywood but uh you guys come on and um what'd you open up with into the void oh into the void so i start watching first of all i love zach wilde from pride and glory right i think it's one of the greatest records made uh in that era yeah uh it just fell through the cracks uh it was right then I, you know a geffen deal huge yeah. money and yeah. everything and and i loved how when he sang like a singer right um you know right. i never got into the uh the, his band black label yeah because of the singing and i know how great a lot he was. different a lot yeah because in, in in leonard skinhead dude he he would do eagles desperado Fucking he did almond brothers yeah. whipping post and and he sang crazy and even that i'm losing my mind well dude it was on when when i talked to blasco too when they called me about this yeah what it, what it was was blasco saw me playing with blast me and nick Oliveri, because we do it's another band we had done together or are doing but he came to see us we were playing with goat snake and he texted i didn't know he was at the show yeah because i literally flew in from uh, from another tour and then split again and then he was like dude would you be into i was at the show i wanted to say hey but would you be into doing this and i was like doing what and he's like the zach sabbath thing and i was like well is it like is it like zach are you, you guys doing it like Ozzy Zach version. Yeah, you guys doing Sabbath version. He's like, no, it's we're doing Sabbath, you know, versions. Yeah, traditional versions, but Zach singing. And yeah, I was like, oh, really? Yeah. And then I went up online and checked, and I'm like, dude, he sounds fucking great. Oh, man. it's incredible. He sounds so killer. Well, that's know? my thing. Is what I liked about Zach and Zach Sabbath was it was he was he. He had a mystique again. Yeah. You know what I mean? He wasn't like, come on, motherfuckers. No. Oh, yeah. He was, he didn't say a fucking word. You guys walked on stage, the curtain went up, and, oh, and boy. the first song is like 25 minutes. Oh, dude, he solos. Yeah. And <laughs> his tone was impeccable. He's playing out of his wild amps, his yeah. own shit, his own guitar, and his tone, his playing, he looked great, uh, and he sang amazing. And he was like, you guys were murdering. Yeah. And then I look, I go, I, and it's so funny. I was with Del James, um, you know, and a couple of buddies, and I go, fucking drummers killing. But I'm, I'm short and it's packed. And I'm like, I'm like, who is it up there, man? I got to see who this is. And I look, and it's you. Oh, no. And shit, I go, dude. holy fuck, that's Joey. And that's when I hit you right away. I go, got to get you on the podcast, yeah. dude. Because. Yeah. It knocked me out how great that was. Oh, and I talked you, about it for 20 minutes. Thank you, man. And, you know, it's not just cover band. It's great no, to see no. that there was some work put into that. Well, you know what it was, man? It was like, you know, I thought the same thing. You know, yeah. and, and, and no offense to all those cover bands that do what they do out there. But when they when, when Blasco called me, I was like, you know, I, dude, I just, I don't want to be that dude. And, and he goes, no, dude, it's Sabbath, okay? Yeah. It's not, it's not just the covering 20 different fucking bands you know and, and like i said those those things are all great and fun yeah whatever and, and, yeah but and i was like blasco's got a direct connection to, to ozzy zach has a it's like this is legit dudes <laughs> two who dudes are, were in ozzy who, yes yeah a, who are a, a part of that world you know yeah and i was like absolutely i want to do this you know if if, if what you guys say it is i you know it'd be i'd be honored to play with both you guys you know be, uh, let's do this you know yeah so they that was like a month a couple months even before it was going down so i was out doing i got went out on the road with my buddy's band the uh the obliterations this great fucking band here from la all my bros there it's it's hardcore it's heavy it's like you know so i went out and did that and i literally came home i was out two weeks with them came home i had to do a show with scott and then i had to do the next day starting with zach so yeah. i was like all my time, because I picked up that tour at the last minute. My, they lost their drummer, got deported, and couldn't, you know, back to Europe for a bad visa or some shit. So I was like, Who's that, Zach Watt? No, oh. uh, the, the, the obliterations. Oh, gotcha. 
So who oh, played the first Zach gigs at the Roxy? Uh, like a year ago, they yeah they, they played. did. Uh, what? Oh, it was Tempesta. Oh, oh, yeah, Joey. Yeah, oh, I yeah. gotcha, Joey. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so I came home and then they're like, "You ready?" And I'm like, "Yeah, let's do this." I hadn't fucking listened to nothing, dude. I was oh. like, "Oh fuck, you know, here we go." So you know, same fucking thing. But I had been now, yeah, yeah, 48 hours just yeah. looping the set, you know. Wow. So. I mean, you were and, killing it. Well, me and Blasco went in for a day, kind of prepped real quick, and he goes, you know, and it was it was so, you know, my brain is, it's going to be so technical and difficult, and Zach, it's Zach Wild and fucking he's this, you know, and I yeah. and it was like, no, dude, just this just rock this shit, you know, and that's all it was. So we got into rehearsals, man, the first day over at Mates, and we all three of us were so stoked just to be fucking, you know, yeah. rocking Sabbath, dude, fucking yeah. 12 or 10 songs, whatever it is. Unbelievable. And, so... We were fucking on fire. Zach just fires that thing. Dude, it was so goddamn loud and insane. We, we, we stopped for a moment. We're like, okay, let's reel it all back in. Yeah. Let's do it again. And, yeah. let's snap. and dude, it just fucking just smoothed itself out, dude. And it was on. It was on. It was on. It was one of the best things I've seen all year. You play with Scott Whelan, uh, one Ooh, of my old, friend, uh, old friends, Dan. Was the drummer? I guess you took his place. Dan. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was their drummer for a long time, yeah. and then uh, I think Tommy Rickard played a little bit with him. Tom, yeah, the old drummer few, for Vane. Yeah, yeah. The end, uh, Victor, uh, uh, Victor Stick played with him a bit too on his solo stuff. And Dan played with him for a long time. He was uh, the drummer in Protein, which was signed to Sony back yeah. in the day. A three piece I, well, band. I think I literally only communicated with him. Um, a while back through email and he was just like hey man you you know that's i'm really glad that you're doing this because it's you know yeah scott's a great guy and i had a great time there and blah blah it was you know, he's very cool you know but i've i've never met him in person but he seems yeah. like a really great guy you know that's a that's a weird gig right scott you know man <clears throat> it's funny because the first first tour the stone temple pilots ever did was with sugar tooth oh and we, we did a tour across america bro it wow was like literally on the first record their first record and that's where i kind of got to know scott and then obviously with the height of his career and my career going you know, yeah kind of lost touch you know i never and then i got a call a couple of years back for, for him from his his people to do his solo record he was doing with albini oh yeah and i was like fuck i'd love to do that you know? yeah but i was it interfered with some queen's time and i just never and I, then i heard you know then i knew Ed goss had done some stuff with him as well at one point and so uh but again, obviously, our worlds never really crossed. Right. Know? So uh, I was home, and I got a call from his guitar player, Jeremy, who passed away. Yeah, uh, what happened? Did that guy OD, and they're not talking yeah, about it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, was that the big guy with the glasses? No. What that happened was, to that guy? The, apparently, they... Just they went part their ways. ways I got this, you. This last record, I, I didn't. I never actually. But he was the one who actually called me for the Albini stuff. Yeah, he was really like Scott's partner early on, yeah. and and it was him and my boy Dan, and they were, you know, they did a country thing. Remember, they wore the, yeah. uh, the they wore those um, nudie suits, and nudie stuff? suits, yeah, yeah. and everything. And yeah. I and and I was kind of like, this is wild shit. And I never was, saw it or anything, you know. I think they played on TV, like uh, did, Leno yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know they did a lot of TV stuff, you know. But I. Uh, but Jeremy was in the band at that time as well. Right. The guitar player passed away. Uh, but anyway, so he had called me and he said, hey, you know, uh, we're looking for a drummer. It's got, we just finished this record and blah, blah, blah. And they, what it was was, I guess Danny was still kind of in the picture. He yeah. wasn't sure if he was going to continue. Because they went between two guys, Danny yeah. and this other kid, uh, Mike. Right. So he was flip-flopping between drummers quite a bit. So... Uh, you know, he had, I told him, I said, well, you know, I, I kind of got this other thing going on at this moment, but, if, excuse me, if you're looking for somebody else to come in and fill in when possible, yeah, I'll come check it out. Yep. You know, so I did, and they sent me the new record, and again, it was one of those things where I was doing something else, another gig, getting ready for, and then I was, got this thing, this call, right. you know, and time-wise, they were going to work out, but it, when I was going in to play with him, it was in the middle of it. I think I was doing a record with Al Johannes or something. I can't remember what it was. So I was like, 
kind of you know at the studio recording and then shooting over to my rehearsal room to yeah. try to learn the Scott stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. His new again, his new record. So, anyway, to go down and we play and it was cool. You know, I was like, oh, yeah, it's, you know. Does the guy die on the road when you're out with him? Just came home, man. We were oh, here's this is how crazy that got. Yeah. So, I go and play with him, and <clears throat> they wanted me to start immediately. You know, but I was like. I gotta sort out biz first, you know, and let's let's figure this out, you know. So Scott calls me, his, his managers, and he's he's been great, you know. Reconnected, I haven't seen him for years, you know. Been like, oh yeah, you know, it's been a long time. And I, they say he want the gig. This is, I was like, oh, okay. And he and he was very cool about letting me do other stuff. He said, yeah. you know, you gotta you. I know you wanted your working guy, you want to do your stuff. But I have no problem with that. If there's ever a time when it gets crossed. I always have this backup guy. Yeah. I'm like, perfect, man. Yeah, yeah. So I, I take the gig and we start and we go out and we come home, finish like a, I think it was like a month and a half run in the States. Right. And uh, come home, we do a private party at the Hard Rock on Hollywood Boulevard. Oh, for yeah. Like blue microphones. It was like, God, it was like, it was March. So we did a private party for them on a Friday night. And then Monday, we're doing a gig at the Avalon. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing yeah. a gig yeah. at the Avalon. The old palace. Yes. Right. Which was my birthday. So we have the weekend off. So over the weekend, I'm, I'm texting with the guitar player, Jeremy, about some stuff, business stuff and this and that. And he, he gets back to me. And that, that's like on, that's like late Saturday night. Uh, Monday comes along and we're at soundcheck for the, at the Avalon. Yeah. And uh, it was weird too because Scott never sound checks. Right? Yeah. He fucking shows up. And was he, that like a private thing? Yeah. Was, was that that awards show? Rival Sons play it too? No, that was the, they did that. They did that as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, they did that as well. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Okay, so this good. is just after that. Okay. So uh this is like some other kind of oh it's a kcrw monday uh, oh, night oh yeah yeah they had something M morning's eclectic or yeah, something yeah it was one of those deals so <clears throat> uh so scott shows up and he's we're waiting we're all set up and it's midday and he's like has anybody heard from jeremy i'm like no not today but you know i talked to him a bit over the weekend and it's like all right well fucking dude never shows up yeah to the gig to the sound check oh the sound check. sound check yeah so check this out. So by the time I leave the Avalon and get to my place downtown, maybe 30 minutes yep. at that time to get home, I get to my garage, man. I'm opening my garage and my phone's ringing and it's the bass player. Yeah. It's like, dude, they just found Jeremy. He's dead. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, what? You fucking yeah. shit me up. Yeah, they found him at his house. They don't. They're not sure what's up. Blah blah blah. This. Sound. I'm like. So now I'm like, holy oh, fuck! Wow. Now. He missed sound check, and it, it, it's just like he was. Just doesn't show up. Yeah, like how long was he dead for? A day or two? Yeah, because apparently, I guess late that Saturday night. Yeah. Uh, when you know he went out, a couple friends. Did you know party? Did, did some partying? Yeah, and yeah. never woke up. Yeah, wow, man. Never woke up. Crazy. Bad. How old was he? Fuck, dude. He was 20. Oh, shit. He was young. Yeah, youngster, man. 28. Wow. 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 Maybe 27. Dude, he was he was a youngster. But Scott, then, you know, Scott had to sit down with his mom and God. his family. And, you know, and the truth of it is, is, and it made a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, this record that he did with Scott, Jeremy, basically he wrote kind of the whole record yeah you know and and jeremy's parents and family were like if you if you guys would tour it would be great because that's the only way anybody's ever going to know the part that jeremy played in this band wow that's you know? cool so yeah it was hard we had to cancel because we, we were getting ready to uh, shoot over to the uk to do a uk run but we had to cancel that wow you know? and then it was like jumping into fucking trying out guitar players oh man that was another fucking nightmare because that kid was a uh, a different kind of a player. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. With Scott for ten years. Wow, you know, ten years. Yeah, wow. Like eight or nine, something like that. But it was a while. I played with him a while. But uh, and he was a really, really good dude, man. Really a, a sweet kid, you know. Yeah, that's um, crazy. He might have been early thirties, but it was it was young. You know, it was young. 
Uh, before you cut out of here, I see your Instagram. You're a writer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm a fucking writer, too. Yeah, I know. And uh, I recently got run over. I heard. Yeah. Where was that at? On the 110 freeway. Oh, Some lady fuck, hit me doing dude. 70, just ran me over. 32 years of riding, first time. And it's, it's funny. Uh, Have you gone down? I, you, I, I don't even talk about it because... No. I, I know. Yeah. How long have you been riding? Uh, well, 15 years, 15 yeah. or so. You, you see how you knocked on wood? Yeah. I always say, people over and over and over at gas stations ask me, hey, have you gone down? And I always knock on wood, and then I stop knocking on wood. <laughs> so now I'm wondering which guy was the guy that cursed me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to find that fucker. It was yeah. one of those guys that didn't knock on wood, you yeah. know? I but, ruined uh, my whole life as a kid, though, during, yeah. like, my dad, you know, my dad, but I've had, you know, I've been, I've started buying my, having my bikes built and stuff for probably the last 15 or 20. Now you got a chopper. Uh, I had a few, man. I had yeah. a few. I had a knuckle chopper that was, what do you, gangster what do you got shit. now? I saw it's the purple shovel, shovel yeah, and uh, just, got that. just got that right now. Just Stock right Harley now. frame, or is it like a Paco frame, or is Paco it custom? frame? Yeah, um, you know Harley front end. Yeah, uh, great looking. Shift. Great. Oh, suicide shift. Yeah, you got front Spindle brake? Fr no, no front brake. No. <laughs> no. It's so funny. All internal, like yeah. everything. You know, I ride every day. You know? <laughs> yeah, I was. I didn't have a car till a month ago. No shit. Yeah, twelve years straight. No it's car, fucking awesome, and uh, that's awesome. And when you ride every day, it's like I've had I had a, a few West Coast choppers, so like five over. Oh, my, have you? Yeah, I had the Chongo Blanco, the rusted right. one. Yeah, I had the Death Dealer, the one with the flame. I remember that? I had that one. I had uh, Mark Nelson's bike, which was a single down tube gold one. I had Pete Adams Dominator with a 300 back oh, tire, <laughs> unrideable. Uh, I had the Jeff Decker. Um, me and a buddy bought that. What did that. Jeff do for you? Uh, Decker had a West Coast chopper. I'm saying they're all oh, West Coast. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. owned all these West Coast. They're famous right, bikes. Right, 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 right. But uh, eventually, uh, it's, it's like... Then I get back into FXRs. I, I start on FXRs and I'm back into them. And my buddy's, he's, oh, man, well, everybody I know is on FXRs. John Theodore. Yeah, uh, yeah, had yeah John F too. Yeah, yeah, his got stolen. Yeah. So uh, you ride a lot? Yeah. Yeah. I ride as much as I can, you know. It's, it's, it's tough, as busy as I've been, you yeah. know. But um, I'm Do you proud. build the bike? It, you or know, that bike, all my bikes, I've been, I mean, absolutely hands-on in there with my bros who've yeah. done them, you know, but my buddies have done them for me, builders, you know. Totally, buddy, yeah. You know, you need a power plant. He's a... Oh, yeah, power plant. Yeah, I know. he's built yeah. my last one. And literally that bike, the purple one I have right now. Yeah. Melrose? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's built a few of my bikes over the years. He like, built some great shit. Yeah, he's awesome. We're I'm actually going to get ready to do an FXR. He, he's, he's been on me for fucking... You got to get... You got to get... Just, you need another bike. You need another bike. Yeah, yeah. And now I find, I was like, all right, well, maybe I, a friend of mine just... It's getting rid of one, so I was like, "Fuck it, maybe I'll just do it." You know? Yeah, yeah, I know. Because I wanted to be the last dude. I just couldn't. I, everybody, so many people had them. I was like, "I don't want one, dude. I don't want one." Yeah, but it's way different than a Dyna. Exactly. Like, it's not just Sons Anarchy. Yeah, yeah, throw yeah. a fairing on. Uh, I got a Dyna. Yeah. You get an FXR. It's got soul. Yeah. It's yeah, not yeah, a yeah. one in a million. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not a million of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, look, I had a '92, and it just got destroyed on the highway. And uh, you know, I'm like, I got to get another one. Yeah. You ready, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's well, awesome. You know what? It's a lot like uh, if you ever OD'd on drugs. It you takes know? a minute. You're like, I'm not doing that anymore. And then about a week later, you're like, maybe just a sniff. Well, you, <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> you know, when you ride 32 that's years. Same, dude, that's a whole different thing. My buddy is like, he's the guy that I'm buying it off of. He had a little fucking, he went down and yeah. he's completely gun shy. He's just like, I'm not getting back on. And I was like, dude, you know what? You shouldn't. If you're yeah. in that frame of mind yeah. where you're that dead set on not getting back on, yeah. don't do it. Well, it's pretty brutal out there, man. And it's tough. It's tough, man. It is uh, in the world of texters and uh, and fucking Just shitty drivers. Texters are are the are the and the and the people smoking weed the whole time while Dude, driving. I trip on that. When bro. you're splitting lanes, it's like weed, weed, text, yeah. text, weed, yeah. weed, weed, weed. People smoke weed all day long. I and trip on that. They I smell like, it more on the freeway on the bike than I do anywhere. It, it's unbelievable, right? And yeah. I try to tell people, I go, you don't understand. Every other car smoking weed. Like, I go to an audition at like 11 a.m. in Santa Monica, and I'm splitting on the 10, and everyone's smoking weed on yeah. the way to work. They're just fucking numbing their lives. Everybody, dude. Isn't that crazy? crazy? Yeah, it is. I, I think of the same shit all the time. And, and, and I know what you're saying, dude, because it is, it is hard to be 
Because I ride like that. All my buddies ride FXRs, yeah. so I ride like that on yeah. mine. Yeah. You know? And yeah. it's not the smartest thing, but that's how I ride. It's yeah. just, I've always ridden like You go that. full face? Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Or open. I do both. You yeah, know? yeah. I, I go open. full face. I just rocks and shit. I can't stand yeah. it. Or I people do. flicking cigarettes out there. Uh, ride. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's, it's, I have a full face, but you know, I, I mostly am open though. But, I, but anyways, but I do either or. But at the same time, it's like... You know, the safety part of it, especially in L.A., that's a big part of why I've just kind of figured, well, you know, yeah. I, I probably should have a, a safer bike, so to speak, you know. Because I, I know myself, and you are, as you know, yeah. it doesn't matter how ride, how you ride, how safe you ride. It's the motherfuckers like, out yeah, there that Someone ran me over. Give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she God, stole, she so stole nuts, a, a car dude. and then was on the 110 trying to get away and plowed You're me. You're kidding me. Yeah, plowed me. I can't even believe I'm alive, you know. Thank God, dude. Thank um. God. You now you live downtown. You got yeah. a place with a garage got a loft downtown. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause uh, I've been looking. Yeah, I got to move here in oh, four weeks. Bummer, yeah, bro. I've been here eleven years. Look at this fucking place. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's a goddamn nightmare, and everything's a fortune now. When you live somewhere from, I got a great place. You do? Oh yeah. For man. me, my building's great. Man. Oh yeah, but it's probably a lot of money. No, dude. It's, it's just it's really, <laughs> it, you know. It's downtown, so uh, I know. it's not for everybody. I know, but you know what? If it's all I care about, here's my thing. When I, I talk to the people, I go, they go, here's the apartment. I go, I don't care about that. Where's the garage? <laughs> Underground secured yeah, parking, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then what do you got? A studio loft? I got a bitch and loft, yeah. Wow. Loft. Studio loft? Or, yeah. or, or, oh, man. It's, it's, it's big. I love it's lofts. Big. It's my dream. Yeah. But yeah, if you go on my Instagram, it's that those shot of the windows, the yeah, arch wind, that's yeah. my that's my place. That's my dream to have a loft. So killer, man. It's I just, love it. It's old school road warrior meets fucking Dude, my 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 actual loft yeah. is uh was Bugsy Siegel's he he actually had his secret vault which is my walk-in closet. What? <laughs> in my place. No dude. fucking way. I swear to God, it's a big fucking vault. They just, it's, it's bad. Is it that one that uh, Geraldo Rivera broke through? <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> Remember that? Remember that? Yeah. We're going to see. The failed one? Yeah, we're going to see what's inside <laughs> the vault. And it was just dust. Dust. Oh, my God, Geraldo. That was such a, dude, that's what you get, bro. Well, hey, man, I, I'm so happy you did the show. Thank you, brother. And Thanks it, for having what me. What a fucking great guy you are. No, and thank uh, you, man. I feel you like too. we're just like the same dudes. Yeah, you know I'm down, I mean? bro. You, you, Anybody that grew up in the 70s is a goddamn <laughs> yeah, fucking, dude. you know, hero, man. Because sure, that was a rad time, great right? Time. Um, uh, okay, Instagram, what is it? Uh, the Joey C. The Joey C. The Joey C. T H E E Joey C. Oh, yeah. oh, the okay, T H E E. Okay, double yep. E. And then uh, is Zach Sabbath doing some road shows? Yeah, we're doing uh, the right now. We're scheduled to do, I think, a week or two around the Nam show. So oh, whatever the Nam show, so we're doing, yeah. we're doing a show or, or two, I think, at Nam. Yeah, and then we're doing some dates that lead up, and then after that, so it's supposed to be like San Diego, yeah, yeah. San Francisco. Oh, I'm gonna go know. see a few of those. Yeah, dude, it's it's so fun. You know, we're at it. We're we're doing a actually. We're doing a record, so oh, that's oh, the other thing. A record of yeah. the Sabbath stuff? Yeah. Wow, yeah. man. What uh, label? Um, I think we're going to do it with Southern Lord. Wow. Yeah, with my boy. Uh, oh Greg my God. Anderson. Yeah. How do you pick what song? <laughs> well, that's a thing. That that's why, it, like, you know, the truth of it is, man, is like Zach said, you know, him and Blasco were talking to me about it when what they, you know, the idea of Sabbath actually retiring this yeah. year, you yeah. know, they just because you know they they did. They both called and spoke to Sharon and Ozzy and wanted to make sure everything was cool. And, yeah. you know, and they were totally psyched. And you know that came up too. And they, you know, Zach was like, you know, I just wanted to show my appreciation to this man and you yeah. know and his his band, dude, because it's like it's what. You know, I mean, fuck. Oh, yeah. How do you not love Sabbath, dude? Oh, it's yeah. Like, well, know, I mean, not only that, but I mean, those first greatest. two uh, Aussie records, yeah. which is why Zach Wilde is alive, you know, in the rock scene of Randy Rhodes. Yeah. I mean, those things are goddamn monumental, you know. Last yeah, year, I was part of the. Um, the tribute to Randy Rhodes that Tissy put on. Oh, right. And just to the, yeah. you know, have the family there and everything. All that stuff, man. I mean, that that era of Ozzy's insane. And also yeah. Sabbath. Yeah. I absolutely love Mob Rules record. Dude, I mean, you're, you know, you're in the boat with Nick Oliveri. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> he oh, fucking loves that record. You don't want to talk Mob <laughs> Rules with me, man. I mean, 
I saw the first two uh, tours with Dio, and I saw the Randy tours. So right. it, it, what I thought was the greatest thing that happened was that Sava split up because we got both those bands. Right. Right. That's a miracle. That's a lightning in a bottle. You That's get right. got, Heaven got and Hell, that. Mob Rules, yeah. and you get Blizzard of Oz and Diary. I mean, come on. That's some heavy shit. It's uh, some of the greatest records ever made. Yeah. Yeah, all right, well, hey, man, uh, I can't wait to see you. I'll be all over the NAMM show. Awesome, we got to get fucking Zach on this thing. Dude, I'm gonna de definitely going to pass it on to him. Yeah, man. absolutely. I, I would love to hear him on here. Oh, dude. fuck that guy. He didn't beat me in arm wrestling. <laughs> I kick his ass. <laughs> he's a, he, that dude, he's, he's one of a kind. Man. I love him. Oh my, What a sweetheart, though. Oh, my God, he's radical. Yeah. I can't believe he's still married, too. Yeah. That's so rare in rock. Dude, he's... How they, great is that? They're like that, too. I know, yeah. right? Yeah, they're great. Oh my God, people. he's such an outlaw. Man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, he's so uh, thank you, man. And, thank you, uh, man. Keep up the good work. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate there you it. There you Any other things where uh, you want to promote real quick? Um, you got the Zach Sabbath. Got Zach Sabbath coming up. Going out with Scott for a bit. I got a, you know, a couple of recording. Me and Nick Oliveri are doing some stuff at the beginning of the year with a couple different bands. So yeah. that'll be fun. And His know, band's great. Yeah. I got, I got that Mondo excuse. Generator. Yeah, I got I the record. And, oh. So any excuse to play with Nick is. Yeah, Nick is an outlaw yeah, he's he's my he's my boy dude you know and <laughs> oh man he's an outlaw him and his el camino oh yeah <laughs> all right man uh thanks for tuning in guys thank you brother see ya